Praise God, family, Pastor Mel here. Listen, whether you got connected with our marriage enrichment, young adult ministry of serving in the children's shelter, even the nursing home, whether you met us in person or online, we are a small church making a big impact, but we got a message for you. Come grow with us. Oh my God. The Lord is up to something way good, and you are in the right place at the right time. We send you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from the Joshua House of Worship, San Antonio, Texas, small church making a big impact, a place where the love of God abounds unconditionally, and where worship comes to life. And man, do we have a blessing. But let me say this first. I want to say good morning. We're going to put Lady K's comments there. And she is also online taking the calls in. And if you have anybody that needs to call in because they do not have Facebook, go ahead and get them to call into this number. And that is 701-801-1211. And as they do that, uh, they'll be able to be blessed by the broadcast. I promise you that. We say good morning to my beautiful big sister. Minister Renee, we love you. We got Dee Dee in the house. We got Miss Krista in the house. So I want to acknowledge some of these comments as they're coming in, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something beautiful. Let me tell you what I'm gonna show you. But now I'm not even gonna tell you what I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna show it to you. We have some special guests with us on today, as far away as California. Hey, God is doing a thing, and we're so grateful. Listen, today we out the box, y'all. This is not church as usual, so let me just get that out the way. If you're expecting the usual this, that, or the other that you're accustomed to, let me mess you up right quick. Don't expect it, uh, and you heard it here first. So let's get ready for what it is that God is going to do. We say good morning to you, D. We love you, darling. You're always, always blessing our hearts. My big sis, love you, love you, love you. Good, you taught that thing this past Wednesday. And again, Lady K says, good morning, good morning. So let me start bringing in some of this dream team ensemble for today. If I could navigate through all this stuff that I need to do. Let me see. I have, let me see, Minister Sandy is here. All right, all right. And, and our crew. And we have uh, Minister Carol is here and her crew. And of course, we can't have service if the whites weren't here. I mean, if the white, I mean, we have to shut, we have to shut church down if they're not here. Good God. And then we got Minister Wayne and Minister Dawn. All right, all right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We got some more. Wait a minute. There's my favorite CPA is in the house. Hey, wait a minute. Let's go all the way over. Damn. Oh, J Law is with us. I mean, Nancy is with us this morning, y'all. And then we got my main man, my brother from California, is with us this morning. And we can't leave out. Where's one of my baby girls? We got a special baby girl right there. And then, hold on, right quick, we got one. Last but not least, the youngest of the bunch. Y'all keep, y'all keep a, y'all keep a, a eye on her because I'm telling you, she about to blow up, y'all. She about to blow up, and we better remember her because she, she better remember us. <laughs> so we're grateful and thankful for each and every one who's going to be a part of today's broadcast. We say good morning to all watching. Again, help us to share, 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 because I promise you the things that are going to be shared today are going to be a blessing in your life. So here's what we're going to do to open up our services. We're going to start at normal. I just wanted you to see this team, y'all. Uh, man, God is about to do some things. So y'all share this broadcast. Sharing is caring. I'm going to put all of our guests back in the lobby temporarily, and then we're going to follow the order of the service. We'll have... Of course, the whites starting out with us. And then I believe, yes, we are missing Minister Ethel. We need to get, if somebody can send her a, a text right quick, see if you can get back to her. But if not, we're going to have the whites and Minister Carol. So I'm going to put everybody else back in the lobby temporarily. Let's see if I can make it happen in the right way. I think I got it. Man, I'm getting good at this stuff. Oh, hell. Watch out now. <laughs> hey. 
There they go. The White family. Y'all all right this morning? You're doing good, Pastor. Doing good. Y'all always doing good. Look at you. Look at them smiles. I remember, I remember I used to smile like that when I was y'all age a few, few years ago. Yeah. No, no, no. You ain't, no, you ain't got to say it like that, man. I said a few years ago, brother. <laughs> That's all right. I see how y'all are. Keep on living. Keep on living. Well, I'm grateful to see your smiley faces. You always bring me joy. And I'm going to get out the way so you can do what it is you do. Uh, for our devotion period, if you go, uh, just lead us in the Lord. Let me go to a couple of the comments first. We got Kenny is in the house. He says, good morning, family. Katrina says, good morning. Amen. You, sis says you are packing out the house with excellence today. Absolutely. Dr. Sherry, my girl, she says, good morning, Jay Howe. Dr. Sherry, we'll get in touch this week so we can start working on what we got to work on. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. So listen, whites, we're going to put y'all in the center, and I'm going to get out the way. Lead us the way you lead us as the Lord leads you. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> good morning, family. Good morning. Again, we are in the presence of the Lord. Thank God for his grace and love and mercy as always. Hope you guys are doing good this morning. We have about we have four scriptures for you guys today. The first one is going to be um, Matthew chapter 24, verses 14 to 30. Again, that's Matthew chapter 24, verses 14 to 30. And then we also have Matthew chapter 9, verses 16 to 17. And I mentioned the, the last two that we First, read these first two here. So we begin in Matthew chapter 24, verses 14 and 30. Okay, and I'm coming from the New Living Translation, and it reads, And the good news about the kingdom will be pre preached throughout the whole world, so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. The day is coming when you will see what Daniel the prophet spoke about, the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place. Reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person out on the deck of a roof must not go down into the house to pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible it will be for pregnant women and for nursing mothers in those days. And pray that your flight will not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For there will be greater anguish than that any time since the world began, and it will never be so great again. In fact, unless that time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive, but it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Then if anyone tells you, look, there is the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive. If possible, even God's chosen ones. See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, look, the Messiah is out in the desert. Don't bother to go and look. Or look, he is hiding here. Don't believe it. For as the lightning flashes in the east and shines to the west, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. Just as the gathering of vultures shows there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. Immediately after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will go give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then at last, the sign that the Son of Man is coming will appear in the heavens, and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. I've just read Matthew 24, verses 14 through 30. And I'll, I'll be reading from our First Chronicles chapter 13. I'm sorry, chapter 12, verses 23 to 32. Again, that's First Chronicles chapter 12, verses 23 to 32. And Lord's uh, word it reads, these are the numbers of the men armed for battle who came to David at Hebron to turn Saul's kingdom over to him, as the Lord had said. From Judah carrying shield and spear, 6,800 armed for battle. From Simeon, warriors ready for battle, 7,100. From Levi, 4,600, including Je Jehodi, Je Jehoda, leader of the family of Aaron, 3,700 men. And Zadok, a brave young warrior, returned two officers from his family. From Benjamin, Saul's tribe. 3,000, most of whom had remained loyal to, to Saul's house until then. From Ephraim, brave warriors, famous in their own clans, 20,800. From half the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, designated by name to come and make David king, 18,000. From Issachar, men who had understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200, chief, 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. Yep, and I just read again First Chronicles chapter 12 verses 23 to 32. <clears throat> 
I'm going to read the third verse, Matthew chapter 9, verses 16 through 17. Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins, for the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new wine skins so that both are preserved. Amen. And the last scripture for today, we read Proverbs 13, chapter 22. And I hope that this, these uh, scriptures have been blessing you guys so far. And this is Proverbs 13, 22, and it reads, A good person leaves an inheritance for the children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. All right, may his best all hearers and do is God's holy and heavenly word. Pass it back to you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer first. Oh. Right. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning so grateful for this new day that we haven't seen before. Lord, we're so grateful for your renewed grace and mercy that you bestow upon us daily, Lord. And we are just so hungry this morning for your word, God. I ask that you would just open our hearts to receive you this morning, for us to put away all distractions, all things that get in our way of just really hearing your word, God. I ask that you would help us not only do be hearers of your word, but doers of your word and to go out and really share your message, Lord, and really take these principles that we learned today to apply to our life, Lord. God, we just thank you. We praise your name this morning. And we are just so excited to go higher and higher in your service this morning. I ask that you would remember that it's not about us. It's about you, God, and that you we would put you at the forefront and keep you first in our lives, Lord. We thank you and praise your name this morning. Amen. Yes, God, I want to send a special prayer, God, to those who are currently you know, battling illnesses, God, or who are, who are about to engage in certain types of things health-wise, Father God. Just keep your hand over them, God. Keep them uh, calm and, and, and patient and, and just keep them in peace, Father God. Bring bring them a uh, good healing, God, and just know that you are going to be with them every step of the way, Heavenly Father. No matter what it is that they're going through, God, if it's going to be surgery, God, if it's going to be uh, curing issues with, with their minds, with their with, with their hearts, God, uh, any physical uh, thing that, that's currently holding them back from being able to function fully, God, I just pray, in God, in, in Jesus' name, Lord, Lord that you come to, to the rescue, God, and just, and just protect them, God, and, and heal them and make them whole, God, and make them strong, and just, again, continue to build them up each and every single day, Lord. Watch over our families, God. Watch over us. And we just praise you and we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for today's service? I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah. You're really I'm ready. You ready. Are y'all ready for today's service? Okay, I hope you're ready. Put <laughs> it in the comments. <laughs> Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. We love you guys. Thank y'all so much. I'm going to ask that you will go into the lobby for me, but then remove yourself temporarily. We'll bring you back in later. I got to get Minister Ethel in position. So we're going to get her in position. Thank y'all, White family. We love you. We love you. We love you. I'm going to go to some of these comments. And let's see if I can uh, navigate through here. Give me just one moment to try to navigate. We want to say good morning, beloved Miss Laura Renosa. We thank God for you this morning, my sister. Thank you for joining in with us at J. How. Brittany, we thank you so very much for joining in with us. We say good morning right back to you and all of your beautiful household. We got Strawberry is in the house. She says good morning to her family. And Aunt Lily was acknowledging her grandbabies. All right. Amen, Didi. We need that prayer. We're praying with you, darling. Praying with you. And she says she is ready. Well, let me go ahead and get uh, Minister Carol in position. She's going to give us our greeting, lead us in the vision. And if we can get Minister Ethel in position, somebody reach out to her and have her to come in position. When Minister Carol uh, completes her portion, I'll have Minister Ethel to come in right behind her. Minister Carol, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Where are you right now? Oh, Pastor, that's a secret. I'm coming, I'm coming up for uh, a secret. Walk. I can't with you. See, every every week you tell us you're gonna tell you tell you tell us you're gonna let us know where you're at, but then, then then you pull this type of stuff. All right, we don't we don't we gonna find out where you are. We gonna find out where you are. So we're so grateful. We got Dee Dee's in the house. She says hello to Sandra. And we got Sandra who says, here, here, praise the Lord. So glad that you are with us on today. And I believe we have Minister Ethel is connecting in with us. So after Minister Carol, after you, give us our vision, our greeting. Uh, I'm going to have Minister Ethel to come right behind you on that. Amen. Amen. And 
Great morning to each and every one of you. I don't know about you, but I count it joy to be in the land of the living for one more day, one more opportunity to join together with you, to come together in fellowship. Oh, and what a mighty God we serve. We're excited today because of you. You took the time to join us, realizing you had so many opportunities to log in on any other service on Facebook, but you decided to join us. And for that, we say thank you from Pastor Mel, First Lady, and all of us at the Joshua House of Worship. We welcome you. And at our house, we have a vision. For the Bible says that where there is no vision, the people perish. So we don't want to be caught perishing, right? You got a vision for your house? Tell you what. If you don't have a vision, the chances are that next year this time, you'll probably be in the same place. But at the Joshua House of Worship, we have a vision. And this is the vision for our house. I don't know about you, but if you know it, will you say it with me? Because I'm proud to be a member of the Joshua House of Worship. And for those of you that still don't know it, or maybe this is your first time, listen attentively to the vision that our pastor wrote for our house. And the vision is living and loving, learning and giving, glowing and going throughout San Antonio and abroad to faithfully share our testimony about God's goodness to us and his love for all humanity. As we live our lives passionately and purposefully in order to make strong and healthy multi-generational and multicultural disciples for God, giving him the maximum glory in all things. And if you really, truly believe that, will you say amen this morning? Amen. Oh, how we appreciate you. Minister Cal, I got to read this comment. <laughs> Minister J says, Minister Carol, my favorite radio and television minister, besides Pastor Key. <laughs> oh, I, love, I, I love a joke. I love a joke. I love a joke. I love a joke. Love a joke. All right. Katrina says, Amen. So she agrees with Minister James. All right. Now. <laughs> We say good morning to each and every one of you. We love you. We love you. We love. All right. Even my even my big sis says amen. <laughs> Sandra says amen. Miss Cal, I'm telling you, you you're slipping. You're slipping. You're slipping. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get Minister Ethel in place. Let me see. I think we got her. Here she is. And what I'm gonna do is good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have so many people who have requested that we stay locked in prayer with them, and there's nobody that's going to be as fervent as you are, that's for sure. And we thank God that we can count on you to lead our prayer ministry. I'm going to give you a few names, and I want you to pray for the whole course of this service today because we're going, we're, going, we're going out into the deep. We're, going, we're not on the shore, that's for sure. We're going outside the box. Be in prayer. And all of these names, I want y'all to lift them up. If you're watching this broadcast, lift up our dear sister, Georgia Washington, and her husband, Brother Washington. He's recuperating at home from his recent surgery. That's the Washington family, uh, Sister Georgia Washington and her husband, Brother Washington. We want to lift up Tara. Got the word late last night that she's in the hospital. Um it's the after effect of COVID. So she doesn't have it anymore. She had it. And now she's dealing with the, the after effect, which is causing severe migraines. So let's lift her, our baby girl Tara, up in our fervent prayers. Got a word this morning that Minister Kelly Williams, she's going to be with her grandmother today. She won't be with us on service. Keep her grandmother, Mother Georgia Jones, Lift it up in your prayers. She's ill at the time, and we want to lift Mother Georgia Jones up in our prayers. And then as she, if you were on with us for the broadcast for the life lesson, you know the sister Natalie has been experiencing difficulty with her vision, which is hindering her from being able to see things right in front of her face. So we're praying for sister Natalie Sheridan. Then our beloved sister Dee Renosa. We want to continue in prayer with her that God will continue to touch her, crown her from the top of her head 
to the soles of our feet. And of course, our senior saints, Mother Lindsay, Mother Felton. I'll be seeing the Feltons this week. I saw Mother Lindsay on last week. If I had time, I would play the message that she wanted me to send. Well, actually, she didn't want me to send to everybody, but I'm going to do it anyway, right? Don't tell her I did it. But I'll share that with you at another time. So we want to keep our senior saints lifted up in our prayer at all time. Minister Albert is still dealing with some things. We want to lift him up in prayer, as well as our brother, Brother Altus Brown and Timothy Jones, who will have the graveside service for his brother on next week. We were able to participate in the memorial service this past Sunday. It was a beautiful service. He is just like his older brother. I can see where uh, they all have so much in common from their parents who raised them. So with that said, woman of God, will you let me go ahead. I'm going to move myself out of the way. I'm going to get Minister Carol out of the way. If you will lead us in prayer, take us to the throne and let God have his Father, how great you are. <laughs> we love you, Lord. We thank you just for this beautiful day that you have made. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this minute. We thank you for the second, for allowing us to be here today, Father in heaven and service. For allowing us to be here just one more time to, to serve, to glorify, to honor you. For you are truly king of kings. You're the Lord of lords. You're the prince of peace. You're the mighty counsel. You're the beginning. You're the end. You're the first. You're the last. You're Ooh, you're our, our rose and sherry, a lily of the valley. And Lord, we come before you, Father in heaven. For your word says that we are to come before you, Father in heaven, to seek ye your kingdom and your righteousness. We are to come before you, Father in heaven, to call upon you so you can show us great and mighty things. We are to come before you, Father in heaven, to, to just call your name, Father Jesus. Lord, we are in prayer for those, Father in heaven, of all the names that have been called out to you, Father in heaven. We lift Tyra up to you, who's in the hospital right now for the after effects, Father. We know, Father in heaven, that you, you're already there with her, Father. We ask that you touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Father, to bring healing upon her migraine headache, Father in heaven. We ask that you give her comfort and peace. And then, Lord, we lift um, Miss Kelly up to you, Minister Kelly up to you, her grandmother up to you, Father in heaven, as she go visit, Father in heaven, that you be in the midst of their conversation, be in the midst of their hearts their minds, their souls, and spirits. We lift Minister Albert up to you, Father in heaven. Well, I, Father, you know he's been dealing with a lot of things, Father in heaven, but Lord, we know that you're a God that heals, for you're a doctor in the sick room, Father in heaven, and we know there's nothing you cannot do, Father in heaven. So Lord, we lift them up to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask a special blessing upon Miss Georgia and her husband, Vincent, Father in heaven, who had surgery, Father in heaven. We ask that you be with Miss Georgia to give her that patience and that peace, Father in heaven, so that she can take care of her husband. We ask that you bring healing upon his mind, body, soul, and spirit. And then, Lord, we just lift those up to you, Father in heaven, like Natalie, who's having a vision problem, Father in heaven. We, we know, Father in heaven, that you knew all these things were going to happen before they even happened. So, Lord, you said, ask and we shall receive. Seeking, you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Father, you said, and whatsoever we shall ask in prayer, believe we shall be received. So, Lord, we believe you right now that you are in the healing business, Father in heaven. And not just for them, Father in heaven, for Miss Dee, Dee, Father in heaven, for um, Timothy, Father in heaven, for the Feltons, Father in heaven, for our Mother Lindsay, Father in heaven, for Timothy, Father in heaven, who's picking out graveside, Father in heaven, for his brother. Father, we also lift the nation up to you at hand. But, Father, we need you right now, Father. We need you to move, Father in heaven. We need you to heal, Father in heaven. We need you to just, just touch each and everyone's heart, Father in heaven, to know that you are God and there's no other God like you. So, Lord, as we continue to go throughout the service, Father in heaven, we lay the service for your feet that you touch every heart, mind, soul, and spirit, Father in heaven, to know, Father in heaven, that you are here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We ask that you touch them, the touch them, Father in heaven, like you never touched them before, because we're going deeper, Lord. We're launching out into the deep, Father in heaven. And, you know, some of us might feel like we're going to drown. Some of us might feel that we're overwhelmed. Some of us might feel, Father in heaven, that we can't handle it. But, Lord, with you, Father in heaven, we can do all things through Christ which strengthen us. So, Lord, we just ask that you, Father, have your way in this service, have your way in our homes, have your way in our families, have your way in our hearts, have your way in our minds. And we, Lord, we just ask that your will be done. Father, we seek you. We're calling upon you. We're trusting your holy word. For your word says, trust the Lord all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, we are to acknowledge you. And you will direct our path. So, Lord, whatever is tending us to hear your word, to, to hear you speak to us, Father in heaven, we ask that it be removed right now in the name of Jesus. 
for Lord, your word this morning will search the search my heart and ooh, that, that you'll search us and you 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 test us, Father in heaven. You see if there's any wickedness in us, Father in heaven. So Lord, we ask that if there's anything that's holding us back. If there's anything that's weighing us down right now in the name of Jesus, we lay it before your feet, Father. We lay it before your feet. We ask that you have your way. Have your way, Father. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way. Have amen. Your way. Let the church have say amen. amen. If you stand in agreement with what the woman of God just prayed, go ahead and type amen, Lord, have your way. Go ahead and type that in the comments. We used to be able, if we were in the sanctuary, amen. Amen. I see my brother Todd, he's in a private chat. He says amen. But if you're out there watching the broadcast or replay or either live, type amen. Lord, have your way. He said if two or three were touching and agree on anything, this is how we're going to touch today. Type amen. Lord, have your way in the comments. We love you, Minister Ethel. I'm going to put you back in the lobby, and I'm going to bring Minister Ethel, uh, excuse me, Minister Sandy in in just a moment. Praise the Lord. We got a number of comments coming in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, D. 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 is small church, big impact. That's what God has given us to do. Amen. And it's because of persons like you, amen, that are connected. Minister James, amen. Lord, have your way. Laura, amen. Lord. Have your way, Sandra. Amen. We, amen. We don't want to call it. Lord, have your way. Ain't Lily. Amen. Have your way. Lady K. Amen. Lord, have your way. Brother Kenny. Amen. Lord, have your way. I believe he's going to do just that on today. Let me bring Minister Sandy into position, and we are blessed to have this musical icon and genius. And no, I didn't stutter icon and genius of the gospel with us today and what she's going to do today she has some new talent coming in right behind her who uh, we're going to have them to let their gifts be known today and i'm going to have her to present the older and the younger and uh what i'll do is i'll come right in after uh after that after that so let me get out of your way and let you do what you do by the way let me ask you uh, for the benefit of those who have not done this yet, on Facebook, after this broadcast, or if you have another feed that you can open up, I want you to go into the search bar on Facebook, and I want you to go to this page. It's called Turn Around, Don't Drown, and that particular page is put together by yours truly, Minister Sandy Evans. Minister Sandy, just give us a quick 30 seconds, if you will, about your last message this past Friday on Turn Around, Don't Drown. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, on last, uh, on our last broadcast on, on uh, Friday, uh, the message was uh, about we've got a wedding to go to. You've got a wedding to go to. Turn around, don't drown. And and uh, in in the message, the message was that uh, about the bride of Christ. And we talked about the bride of Christ and who the bride of Christ was and the beauty of the bride of Christ. Uh, uh, one day, we as the church, of we will go, we are the bride of Christ. And one day we will be united with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the bridegroom. Uh, if you will go to that site uh, and, and hear that message, I pray that you will be blessed. Amen. And if you're uh, if if you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sin, uh, we encourage you to accept the Lord as your savior, that you may be a part of the body of Christ and be a part of that uh, great wedding celebration that's coming up. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. Shout out to our sister Jan. We love you, darling. Pastor Paul, thank you for chiming in. I'm going to get out your way, Minister Sandy, if you'll introduce our uh, Joshua generation that's going to lift their hearts to the Lord. Amen. It's a blessing this morning uh, to be able to uh, present to you these two beautiful young ladies. Uh, uh, first sister, Alex, will come. Uh, her name is Alexandria. We call her Alex, uh, affectionately known as Alex. 
Uh, she's a part of our praise team, uh, uh, one of our uh, lead singers in our praise team. And God has blessed her with a tremendous voice. And what I love about Alex, she sings from her heart. When you, when you hear her sing, uh, you can hear uh, her, the, the, the realness about her worship uh, when she sings because she sings from her heart. And, uh, and I know that she's got a, a song that's going to bless us on this morning. And following her will be our baby girl, Mariah. And I've, I've watched Mariah grow up, my goodness, and she's grown up so quickly. Um, but Mariah has a, a gift for, for writing and, and uh, singing also. And what I like about Mariah, she's not ashamed. Uh, when she was a little girl and, and she would get up and sing the, the songs that uh, she was given, uh, she wasn't afraid to do it. And, you know, as saints, we need to be, uh, we need to have holy boldness like uh, Mariah. And I, I used to say little Mariah, but I can't call her little Mariah any longer. I was looking at her uh, her picture this morning and my goodness, she's grown up. She's growing up to be such a beautiful young lady. And uh, I know that she's going to share with us right after uh, Alex, what God has put on her heart. And 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 I say to, to both of you this morning, uh, let go, let God and let him use you to bring glory and honor to his name. Amen. All righty. Good morning, everybody. Um, I miss singing with my family, y'all. I miss being at church and us singing all together. That was like my favorite part of going to church was singing with everybody. Um, and in due time, that'll happen again. Um, unfortunately, the circumstances right now are a little tough. Um, but God is getting us through it, so it's fine. Um, the song that I'm going to be singing for y'all today is uh, Sing Hallelujah. <clears throat> Um, I hope that it blesses you as much as it blesses me. Sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing. Sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing. Sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing, sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing, sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you reign forever. Oh, my soul will sing, you reign forever. Oh, my soul will sing, you reign forever. Oh, my soul will sing, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you reign forever. Oh, my soul will sing, you reign forever. Oh, my soul will sing, you reign forever. Oh, my soul will sing, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you brought me over. Oh, my soul will sing, you brought me over. Oh, my soul will sing, you brought me over. Oh, my soul will sing, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you brought me over. Oh, my soul will sing, you brought me over. Oh, my soul will sing, you brought me over. Lord, my soul will sing, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you made a way, Lord. Oh, my soul will sing, you made a way, Lord. Oh, my soul will sing, you made a way, Lord. Oh, my soul will sing, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You reign forever. Oh, my soul will sing. You reign forever. And all my soul will sing. You reign forever. Oh, my soul will sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing, sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing, sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hi, I'm Mariah, and I made, Pastor really wanted me to do two songs together, so I made a little mashup of two songs, Time to Believe and Take Me to the King, so I'm going to be singing those two songs, and I hope you guys know. Okay. Take me to the king, I don't have much to bring, my heart is torn in pieces, it's my offering lay me at the throne leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory sing to you this song take me to the king don't allow your past to dictate where you're going well, who you all make you believe you can't go on Cause God's promise is true And what he said he will do It's time to believe Oh, believe I will believe I will believe in what God said I will believe in what he promised. When we see small, he sees great. When we speak down, he speaks faith. Time to believe in what God said. Oh, 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 oh. I will believe. Hey, ooh. When we see small, he sees great. When we speak down, he speaks faith. Time to believe in what God said. So take me to the king. That was a mashup, so. Pastor, your mic is muted. You see why we need young folk all the time? You see? You see what happens when you get older? Keep on living. Keep on living. <laughs> but let me just say, I am so proud of you and Alex to see what it is that God is doing in your life. And, and Mariah, I believe, uh, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. You're, as Minister Sandy said, not only are you an aspiring uh, singer and worshiper, but you're a songwriter. So just give me approximately, to your, to your knowledge at this point, how many songs have you written thus far? To be honest, I really don't know. I was writing songs when I was really, really little, but the songs okay. that I am very proud of that I feel would really, I would really like to release if I ever become an artist, maybe 30, 50, enough to make some albums. I just... Okay. I just really love songwriting, so it's always been something I've been doing. So I really have a lot of songs. Well, you sent me 453 of them, so I, I want to add that to that number. No, I did not. <laughs> I love you, baby. Keep on doing. Hold on, wait a minute. We got Trent White. He says a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yes, because both of you have heard me since like a little, but the song. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. Well, we love you. Keep 
don't don't you let anything or anyone discourage you sky's the limit to what god is doing already in your life and we so love you and thank you alex uh, for allowing God to use you both so greatly. So I'm going to put you in the lobby. Don't go away because I'm going to need you to come right back in a short period of time. Listen, guys, I'm so grateful to God to be surrounded with these types of persons that just want to be used by God. And all of us have a gift. And whatever your gift is at this point in time, we need to be using it. Every man, every woman, every child on deck, we need to get God's people in position to do what it is that he's called us to do. My brother Todd says, the singing was amazing. I ran downstairs so that my, my, my wife could hear it as well. Amen. Praise the great name of Jesus. So we're so thankful and grateful for everybody. Listen, I told y'all we were way out the box today. If y'all were expecting church as normal, as usual, uh, you in the wrong place. I don't know what to tell you. So let me go ahead and start uh, and get right into the heart and soul of some of the things that we're going to need to cover on today. I'll start with this. I want to thank Minister Ethel for leading us in prayer, and I want to thank the whites for reading the various scriptures. Here's what I'm going to do. Some of what's going to be said today, especially as it pertains to the passages of scripture, not only did the whites read them, but there's been some messages that I've shared in the past six weeks that some of those same passages were a part of them. So here's what I want you to do very quickly because we're going to have to shave off some time, but we will be a little longer than usual and it will be necessary and it will be more than worth it. Somebody go ahead and put it in the notes right now. It's going to be more than worth it. So I want you to get ready to pay attention. Don't miss a thing. I have some guests that are here today for such a time as this to bless your life. Now, if you don't want the blessing, it'll go to somebody else. But stay put, stay in place, and stay focused. Now, here's the passages. I'm not going to read them again, but I want you to put them in the notes, please. Matthew 24, verses 14 through 30. Somebody put that in the comments. Matthew 24, verses 14 through 30. And you all know, as we've preached through that passage a couple of times in this series, and even before, that's the parable of the talents. But I want you to do this. Put Matthew 24, verses 14 to 30 in the comments, and I want you to do this. I need to know that y'all are with me. Put hashtag work your talent. Come on, I want to see you do that. Hashtag work your talent, and then put hashtag don't lose what you got. That's what I want to see somebody doing right now. Hashtag work your talent and hashtag don't lose what you got. That's Matthew 24, verses 14 through 30. Then uh, the whites, they read Matthew 9, verses 16 and 17. And y'all know that's the story about the wineskins, right? I don't want to mess nobody up. But uh, Matthew 9, chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 16 through 17. They read that as well, and we've talked about that. I want you to put this down. I need to know that y'all are with me. Put hashtag, it's a new season, and hashtag, I'm going to do something different. Hashtag, it's a new season, and hashtag, I'm going to do something different. Now, I'm going to go to the comments because I need to know that y'all are with me because if you're not with me, I'm going to have to start all over and y'all don't want that to happen, right? <laughs> Amen. Didi says, take her to the king. Absolutely. Trent White says, work your talent. Katrina, there you go. Work your talent. Trent, don't lose what you got. Sandra, there you go. Work your talent. Minister Jane, work your talent. Don't lose what you got. Don't lose what you got. All right, y'all are with me. I guess we can keep this thing moving. There we go. We got it right there. So here's what I want you to do now. Write in the comments, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verses 23 through 32. That was a part of one of our passage, passages in the seas, on the series that I was bringing in about six weeks ago, somewhere in that time frame. In fact, I would encourage you uh, just to go through the whole series that we've been preaching on and teaching on. But go ahead, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 23 through 32. Now, when you read that, uh, that, there's a powerful entourage of men of God, mighty men of valor, mighty men of God, David's men, his choice men, and they were the ones that God used to take David from the position of the cave 
to the position of the, the throne in the palace. And, and this is what it, it brings out. There was one particular group, one particular tribe of men. They were known as the sons of Issachar. Here's what I want you to do. Say, hashtag discern the times. Come on, I need y'all to do that quickly. Hashtag discern the times and hashtag know what time it is. Hashtag discern the times and hashtag know what time it is. That's First Chronicles chapter 12, verses 23 through 32. Now I'm giving it to you this in, in this format because one of the things I want you to do, I want you to feed on all of these passages this week. This needs to be your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner with the Lord. Let me give you one more. Proverbs, and this is the last one. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. I'll read that. It's just one verse, but I want you to get ready for this, and I'm going to give you the hashtags. Proverbs 13, verse uh, chapter 13, verse 22. It says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Man, that felt good when I said it. Let me do that one more again. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man, or one man for that matter, leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. I want you to hashtag this thing now. Hashtag, I will get my house in order. You need to make that declaration. You need to make that decree. You need to confess it. You need to hear yourself saying this. I will get my house in order. Y'all remember what Joshua said? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You can't speak for all those other houses. There are some houses, even today, that are going to think we're off the reservation. But all you can do is speak for yourself in your house. Hashtag, I will get my house in order and do this other one. Hashtag, I got to get my money right. I need to hear from somebody. I will get my house in order and hashtag, I got to get my money right. Let's see. If you're sending a message in a private chat, if you can put it for me on the um, feed, on the uh, feed, because I can't see both at the same time. Uh, the private chat will be just for the, the panel and the feed. I can acknowledge what everybody is saying. Y'all know this attention deficit that I struggle with. Uh, can sometimes be very challenging. But Minister James says, I will get my house in order. Woman of God, Sandra says, I will get my house in order. And Lily says, I will get my house in order. Katrina says, I got to get my money right. I know you're right about it. James says, I got to get my money right. DD, I got to get my money right. Sandra, I got, there you go. We all don't want a court. Two or three touching anything so to be done. So I'm believing God with you. And God has blessed us with a panel today that's going to help us to do just that. But before we even go there, let me just kind of let me just kind of build the platform or paint the picture with some backdrop before we even get to our guests. His or, in fact, I want you to use this as a, as a title. If I was using the title today, you saw it in the, in, in the picture. No more business as usual. No more business as usual. And if you're about your father's business, that would include church business, life business, just life as a whole. No more life as usual. No more business as usual. No more church as usual. Things, things have changed, right? In fact, if you look at the little picture, uh, that the graphic that was shared for today's broadcast, it's, it's a picture of a, a house a bedroom or living room, some a den, something like that. And as you look at the paint on the walls, there's holes, there's paneling torn off, missing, and, you know, everything's all, there's an old couch, and it looks like it was dilapidated, hole in the floor. I mean, it's jacked up. You know, we say back home, it's tore up from the floor up. I mean, it's the type of, I mean, it is a shack of a room to live in, but the reality is that's the best picture, let's be clear, of where some of us are in different areas of our lives. And, and God wants to do something about it. He loves, watch this, he loves us so much that he'll take us as we are, but he loves us too much to leave us in the same position. And he wants us to come closer to him, and he wants us to get this word that we do no more business we do no more church. We do no more life 
as usual. I, I wish I had some witnesses in there that understood where we're going already. See, we've lost out into a space, and it's my conviction that the church has not nearly gone far enough out into the deep. Y'all stay with me now. We've given away some territory that God originally gave to us, but some of us, because we're not acquainted with the scriptures, and all we've done is we've listened to what others have said instead of searching the scripture for ourselves, we don't even believe the space belongs to us. Put this in the notes. Hashtag check your Bible. Hashtag check your Bible. We've forgotten so much. We've forgotten what God told us. We, we've forgotten who he said we were. We've forgotten what he told us to do. So we begin to listen to other voices and other opinions and, and other ideas and other philosophies instead of uh, owning what it is that God has told us from the very beginning. Man has to keep changing his story, but God does not. He's the same yesterday, today, come on, somebody help me, and forevermore. So church folk, we, we tend, it's sad, but it's true, I'm just going to tell you what it is. We tend to lag behind the world, you know, in just about everything, 20 to 40 years behind. I mean, they do something and we think it's worldly and we don't even understand it has nothing to do with worldly or godly. It is what it is. It's an opportunity. And because we lag behind, because we are so spiritual and many times we miss it because we're so spiritually minded that we become no earthly good. And we're, we're going to have to shake that up. God, in fact, is using this whole COVID crisis, this, this pandemic, to shake some things up so that we will no longer do business as usual, life as usual, or even church as usual, for that matter. See, we talked a few weeks ago, we were talking to one of my good friends, Sean DeRoe, the financial expert, the wealth shift strategist. Hashtag that. I want a wealth shift. Because if you want that, go back to that uh, episode about two weeks ago. He laid down some nuggets. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about or remember some of the nuggets that our brother talked about? I ain't got time today to go back and talk about them all over again, but you need to exercise due diligence. Because a lot of times God will put the solution right in front of our faces. We've been praying about a thing, and God has answered a thing, and is staring at us, and then we still go back to praying. <laughs> I, I never understand it for the life of me. So we talked to the financial expert. We talked to the guru, the wealth shift strategist. He's managed, listen, he's managed hundreds of millions of dollars, so he knows what he's talking about, and then we'll just dismiss every word he said. He gave us some serious nuggets about how to manage our money. Last week, we began to talk with a few other business professionals, and they were in the insurance area, area, and they helped us to understand this thing called income protection and how it is so many people, especially now. Listen, you don't know the day or the hour. You don't know when God is coming for us or when we're going to him, so you got to be ready. Not get ready, but you got to be ready. And they talked to us about the fact that so many people, they gave a testimony, one of the persons on their team left us a powerful testimony here it was she was married with children her husband went to go see his mother not far from where they lived got to report he never made it back home and they had talked about income protection but they had never taken action and how many years her and her children were made to suffer and struggle through because they didn't make the decision to get income protection when they should uh y'all need to get back to that last week's broadcast it was dope y'all somebody put that in in the comments it was dope <laughs> it was dope listen you gotta make sure you have proper income protection you gotta make sure then we had another woman of god a queen in our own right, she, she, she shared with us, not only do you need proper income protection, but when you die, not if, somebody say when, because we all gone. You do understand that. It ain't no surprises here. It's not, it's not if. It's when we die, we're going to either be cremated, right, or we're going to go in a casket, or oh, there might be some other options, you know, but I don't know. But one of those two things. But either way, here's what it does. It costs money. And those cause factors continue to escalate. They say every 10 years it doubles. And that's why some folk, you know, they, they, I mean, the things they have to do just to bury someone or just to funeral. And it's time out for that if we're the body of Christ. It's not a good look that we know God who has all power and all control of everything. And then we got to act like paupers when it's time. Listen, there's some things we got to do. We got to take ownership for ourselves. So that was last week. I encourage you, please. 
Go ahead and watch last week's broadcast. If you need a copy of it and you can't find it in the feed, go ahead and say, I need last week's broadcast. Hashtag, I need last week's broadcast, and I'll get that for you. But today we're going to talk to a few more experts about what we can do to even make more money. Because we talked about the, uh, the, the saving the money and all of that. Protecting the money, especially even you know your untimely demise, demise how to, to keep it and all of that. But we need to talk about also because we need this out. How, how, how can you make more money? How how can you know the, the word of God? If, if, if you read it, He's given us the power to get wealth. I, I don't know if you knew that it's in the Scripture, and if He's given us the power to get wealth, how, how do you make more money? We always talk about it's a lack, it's a it's a shortage. No, it really isn't. What's short is our willingness to tap into what God has already showed us, what God has already said, and do the thing the way he's told us to do it. That's what's in shortage. But money is in high demand, and it's in high supply, and there's a whole lot of folk that got it. We just got to do what we need to do to get it. How many of y'all need some more money? I need, I, need, I need you to put it in the comments. It's not money that's the root of all evil. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. And I, and I want to hear you clearly, if you mean this, Hashtag, I need some more money. If, if that's you, hashtag, I need some more money. Don't don't be afraid about it. Don't be ashamed about it. It is what it is. Somebody put it in there for me because that's my statement. I need some more money. So I'm, I'm on a strategy. I, I, I'm, I'm being coached. I'm being trained for some of those things. And, and, and you need to understand today, if you want to learn how to do it, it's available. Not only that, but we got some specialists can show us not only how to make more, but to keep more. See, there are millionaires, and I'm going to show you something in a moment. There are millionaires, even billionaires, who made masses of money in a very short period of time, and almost as soon as they made it, it wasn't too long before they lost it. So it's not just how much you make, it's also how much you can keep and how you can protect what it is that you have already acquired. So we're going to be looking at that. Why, why is this all important to the church? Because the church should not be in lack. God's people should not be in lack. We ought to go to war on poverty in a very real way so that we can live the life and the mission and the purpose that God has assigned for us. But when we are destitute and when we always got our hand out, you can't help nobody else. I wish I had an amen somewhere in there. And then the same folk that complain, well, all you talk about is money. They the ones, listen, number one, they the ones that ain't giving none. And number two, they are always the ones that need some help. How, how, how you going to have that attitude? So don't worry about all the, do, you know, the naysayers. Don't worry about all the critics. Just focus on the fact that you, listen, you know for a fact you need to get your house in order. So if all we've done today is literally expose you to some things that have allowed you to go to God, your creator, to get the direction. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. All I want to do, if I can just whet your appetite to get you with God, your creator, to, to stir up the gifts and the talents and all the magnitude of things that he's put inside of you for such a time as this, so that not only will you not be in lack, but your whole household might be made to prosper even in a famine. See, we're in pivotal times. There are swift transitions that we have already begun to experience, and we will either keep up or we will get left. We will either keep up or we will become obsolete. And now is the time. I want someone to put this in the comments. Now is the time. Hashtag, I will reinvent myself. Go ahead. Put that in. Hashtag, I will reinvent myself. See, we're always looking at other people and other things. God wants you to become this renewed person. He's doing a new thing. Will it have to be with others because you you just held on? That's why we talked about you know the old the old wine and trying to put that old wine into new wine skins. It it doesn't work. We need to remodel. We need to refresh. We need to restore. We need something new. Put this in. Hashtag I want to upgrade. Hashtag I want to upgrade. Hashtag I must go to the next level. So you need to make that decision today. Hashtag I must go to the next level. And, and, and here's what I've learned in life. If you've been on the road and you determine that that road is not even going in the destination that you desire to go, that means you got to make some changes. Hashtag I want to upgrade. Hashtag I must go. I will go to the next level. Some of us, we have so many failures 
And you got to learn in this, in this, in this environment, in this day and time, failure is a part of the process. And you got to learn to use those failures to produce more fruit. Some of you, you, you have a lot of pain that you've been carrying, but you got to take the pain from your past and make your pain pay you profits. There's some things that have to shift. There's some things that have to change because success looks differently than it used to look. We got to be more effective. We got to be more efficient. We got to use strategies that are designed for these times rather than 40, 50 years ago, and it's not working anymore. Again, we got to put in the new wine into new wine skins and not old wine skins. So when we look at today's subject, I know some of you are going to say, man, this is something I, yes, but it's something that we must get very familiar with because when the word of God tells us that we are to be the lender and not the borrower, how many people are living like that that you know that are in the body of Christ? Why will it have to be someone else and not you? For the vast majority of us, we, we really must not believe what God says because we're not listening to what he's, you know, we're not listening to the words that are coming out of his mouth. He said we will be the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower, but our own advice that we give to others, our actions betray us. How are we going to be the head of anything if we're not even aiming at ownership? How are we going to be the head of anything if we owe everybody? And where, 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 where does it ever tells us, tell us that God, God, God is just going to, you know, pour anything out of the sky? Yes, there's always going to be work involved, but it's not just working harder. It's learning to work smarter. When we look at the Proverbs 31, bless his name. When we look at the Proverbs 31 experience, we see that virtuous woman. And we also see her husband, but the highlight is on this virtuous woman. Look at all the streams of income, this woman, this virtue. See, if you got virtue, you're going to have some more streams of income. The more virt, listen, the the more virtue you have, the more streams of income you'll have. Come on, put that in the comments. The more virtue you have, the more streams of income you'll have. Study up. Read up on Proverbs 31. We always talk about her. And then Paul, we, we understand that he was a, a mighty man of God, anointed of God, an apostle. But he also had a business called making tents because he will not let nobody get the glory and the credit for taking care of himself. And he did make a, a mean tent. <laughs> he made a mean tent and he was able to provide for himself and those connected in his ministry. Say what you want, but but we got to make some changes, y'all. I'll, I'll give you this last one. Consider Joseph. We read about the mighty man of God, how God used him greatly because he was a dreamer and a visionary and all of that, but you better not miss this. Joseph was also the essence of everything we know a, best, a businessman to be. Joseph was about that business. That's how he was able to take all of Egypt, the whole nation, and the nation of Israel. That's how he was able to be used of God to bring them out of famine into fruitfulness. Because not only was he a visionary, but he was a businessman. And this time out for doing church in a box, we were never supposed to be in the box in the first place. We were supposed to be doing business, life, and ministry out in the deep. I have a very special video that I wanted to share with you, but for the sake of time, I'm not even going to share it with you right now. It would just blow your mind and mess you up. But for those who want access to this video, I'm going to have two special things, what I will call a call to action that I'm going to share with you today. The first one, if you want this special video that's going to literally blow your mind about everything that we're going to be sharing today, I need to hear from you hashtag I need that video and at the end of the day within the next 24 hours you'll have it in your inbox hashtag I need that video it's gonna blow your mind I promise you but what without any further ado I'm gonna go to the notes and then I'm gonna introduce this panel for you that is here to help us to get our lives in order. Let me go to some of these comments. I want to make sure y'all are there. Amen, man of God. Transformation, Romans 12 and 2. Transformation begins by changing the way you think. What a mouthful right there, straight from the word of God. Alex, I will. I love that declaration. Go to the next level. Minister Ethel, I want an upgrade. Man of God, Mark, I will reinvent myself. We have to. I'm going to upgrade, level up. Absolutely. There you go. I love it. I love it. I will reinvent myself. Let me go back down to some of these. 
Laura, so I will reinvent myself. Minister Sandy, I must go to the next level. There we go. Next level. Amen. Next level. Alex, amen. Be the lender, not the bar. Thank you, darling. And let me tell you, it it will not happen on the path that most of us have selected. And some of us don't even know that we've selected it. But then if we didn't select it, it selected us. So we're going to hear about that today. Laura, I'm going to the next level. Lend, not borrow. Amen. Pay your debt to grow. Amen. We got to get out of debt. Come on here. And I'm preaching to myself. Got to get out of debt. One can't loan what one doesn't have. Learn to give. Amen about that. Be credit worthy. Got to get our credit right. We got more coming on that as well. Amen. Doug, don't get bent. Reinvent. <laughs> All right, Doug. Right, that sounds like a song. Amen. All right, Dad, I'm glad you're there. Uh, Ain't Lily, I need that video. Amen. I need that video. Amen. I need that video. All right, the ones that say it, you're going to get it. The ones that don't, won't. All right, it'll be in your inbox within the next 24 hours. So let me do this. I got some special guests. I can't hold them much longer. The very first guest that I'm going to bring up, let me read some basic bio information. Now, the man could have given me 17 pages, or he could have wrote a whole book just for his bio, but let me just read what he sent me, being humble about it. He says, I have been self-employed since I was 13 years old. I grew my lawn and landscape company with employees that I had when I was in high school. I borrowed $100,000 from the Small Business Administration after graduating high school and became the largest lawn and landscape company in Champaign, Illinois, with 10 trucks on the road and 25 employees. Now, for some people, that would have been that, you know, that, that would have been good right there. Man, you've been rolling since you were 13, but here it is. His accountant, who would help him to get the SBA loan, introduced him to the direct selling industry when he was 24 years of age. So he's been doing that full time ever since. He says, my family has experienced the ups and downs of being self-employed, but all in all, it has generated incredible income. Put capitals on that, y'all. I'm not going to disclose all the information, but just put capital letters on incredible income. Unprecedented time freedom, put capital letters on that too, and the ability to meet and work with amazing people and experience an extraordinary life. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the first panelists I'm going to bring is none other than my brother, Mr. Todd Strand. I call him Coach Todd. Coach Todd, how are you, sir? I'm incredible. Amen, amen. I am loving the service this morning, Pastor. Bless you, man of God. Man, I've been inspired. I got, I got your book right next to me all the time. <laughs> hey, hey, there you go. I'm not, I, look, I, I'm, I'm grateful. I got, I got a few more that I need to get on the ball and get done. But today, my friend, I had to have you. I couldn't think of anybody more deserving and more worthy to speak into our lives from a biblical perspective about some of the journey that you yourself have experienced. First of all, let's start with the fact that here it was, you were 13. Tell us that story real quick, because each person, I have a few, and we got to take about eight minutes to pack all this in. Tell us that story about how you started a business at the age of 13. Well, I was actually visiting my grandfather. Um, he just sold this restaurant, and I was in Arthur, Illinois. And he, my grandfather was one of those guys. He had to stay busy, or he would have died even before he died. And he started mowing lawns in the neighborhood. And I'm, I'm riding on the lawnmower with him. I'm 12 years old. I said, hey, Grandpa, how much money do you think you're going to make this summer? He goes, oh, I don't know, probably about $3,000. I'm like, do you have any idea how many candy bars you can buy three thousand dollars? I do. <laughs> so Dude. I got excited about doing lawns. My dad got excited that I was excited about doing something, you know, constructive entrepreneurship. And uh, we actually got a riding mower and commercial accounts, and we you know we started the business, and we just kept growing that business, and uh, you know eventually you know, we got to the point we had ten trucks, twenty five guys, and it was incredible. I mean, some of the greatest memories of my life were the, were those were those times. My Lord. Now, here it is. You had all of that, and then you sold it. And why is that? Well, I discovered the direct selling industry. And so I told my younger brother, you can have this lawn landscape thing, which he does to this day. And I you know, got involved in this industry that you know gave you the ability to build a business around the world, you know, from the comfort of your home, you know, no employees, no warehouses, no bookkeeping, no OSHA, no, you know, no workman's comp, no unemployment insurance, no this, no that. I mean, I'm salivating all over myself, right? I mean, this is a very simple business, but yet it had a much higher income ceiling. 
and it was ability to, to, to touch people. Um, and I, I think that the, the service you gave this morning, Pastor, I don't think enough people could see the service you just gave. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. too many people don't realize that, you know, that you, you, we might need to separate church and state, but we don't need to separate, you know, you know church and business. In fact, they're, oh. they're the same. Uh, mm-hmm. If you read the Bible, I mean, constantly they're talking about farming, which is the profession of the time. I mean, the, yes. these, these things intertwine together. Uh, mm-hmm. Many of the great biblical fi- you know, you know, uh, you know, figures were entrepreneurs. And mm-hmm. so, you know, and you were always told, you were taught, you know, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, why is that? And how do you do that? Well, you do that by servicing God's fellow children. You do that mm-hmm. by servicing your fellow man. Jesus mm-hmm. said, you know, you know, great, you know, service to many is what leads to greatness. Mm-hmm. So how do you service people? Well, through entrepreneurship, we service people. You know, mm-hmm. through entrepreneurship, we grow crops and feed people. Through mm-hmm. entrepreneurship, we become doctors and take care of people. Through mm-hmm. entrepreneurship, we do things that service God's other children. And that's how you please God. And there's, you know, countless scriptures that talk about this. Um, mm-hmm. You can go to, you know, so I just think the service you gave was absolutely incredible. I mean, you look at the parable of the talents. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously you, you pointed out that scripture. Are we using our talents and maximizing our talents? Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually went through a book recently, by the way, called uh, biblical secrets of the Bible. And yeah. in the book, it talked about how the Bible was originally written in Hebrew. Well, mm-hmm. that's they called it God's own language, right? You know, because uh-huh. that was the first language that was ever written in. And when in the Hebrew language, if you see a word and you see its meaning, you can write the word backwards and it has the opposite meaning. Well, the word for wealth in Hebrew is R S H O. That means wealth. Well, mm. if you spell it backwards, O S H R, Osher, it should mean poor, right? But it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It means mm-hmm. evil. Now, why would the opposite of wealth be evil? Mm. Well, go back to the parable of the talents. He gave one five talents, turned it to 10. You wonderful, faithful servant. Gave mm-hmm. one four talents, right? You know, turned it, mm-hmm. your, your two talents, turned it to four. You wonderful, mm-hmm. faithful servant. Gave one one talent. <laughs> I buried it because I was afraid. You awful, wicked servant. Yes. Because you held that talent to yourself. You didn't bless others with that talent. Therefore, mm-hmm. take that one from him, give it to the one with 10, and you know, here we go. So even mm-hmm. Jesus referred to that servant as being wicked, evil, because you mm-hmm. didn't use the gifts that God gave you for the betterment of God's other children. But that's where prophets come from. Service mm-hmm. to many is what leads to greatness. Service to many is how we love our brothers and sisters. I just don't think that's being taught enough. And I think your service today was just so absolutely incredible. And Man. there's so many ways to do that. You know, working from home, there's so many amazing businesses out there that people can do where you can go out and be of service to people all around the world. My wife and I today, you know, mm-hmm. we have a team in 52 different countries. Uh, mm. I mean, you know, different languages and people that we get to reach. I was in Madagascar, uh, you know, back in March. Uh, mm. I was in Reunion Island, Mauritius Island. You know, we, we get to kind of tour the world. And and there's tons of companies you can do that with. There's no one company that has, you know, the be all. I mean, there's tons mm. of companies out there. And uh, mm-hmm. there's so many ways for people to, uh, again, embrace entrepreneurship, starting part time, start with virtually no money and, and build an empire around the world that allows them to touch people. Uh, in a way that you can inspire them, lift them up, coach them, teach them uh, the same way our Lord took mm. 12 apostles. You know what I mean? You took, you know, 12 fishermen. Of course, Matthew was a tax collector. You know, took 12 <laughs> ordinary people that were very flawed, right? I mean, you know, you think about Peter, he was a hothead and cussed and you know, all these other kind of things, right? He wasn't a saint at that time. And right. our Lord and Savior took him, coached him up, and then you know, laid the foundation of, you know, building that ministry, uh, which mm-hmm. obviously two and a half billion Christians. I mean, I mean, wow. Um, mm-hmm. that, 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 that's a big ministry. Uh, yes, all sir. of us have the same ability to go out and touch people in a similar way. Man, that's incredible. Coach, tell us this because sometimes what happens in this particular industry of direct sales working from home, no matter what company or what field it may be in, sometimes the wrong message may be conveyed and sometimes the wrong message may just be received. There are challenges, there are struggles, and there are many lessons to be learned. Can you, in a very short time, can you give us some of the greatest lessons you've learned about why people don't do well, why they fail in that uh, particular venture? And then, you know, kind of like the whole industry sometimes can get a bad, a bad, a bad rep, if you will. What are some of those challenges, struggles, and lessons we need to know about? Uh, well, the biggest challenge is human nature. Um, and I'm going to go back to the Bible first and foremost, because you know, Jesus said many are called, few are chosen. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, we're not 10 cleansed and only <clears throat> one out of 10 came back to give thanks to God. Mm. Did Jesus not say, hey, wide is the road that leads to destruction, narrow is the path that leads to salvation, and only a few, few will find it. Did Jesus not say the harvest is ripe, 
but the mm -hmm. laborers are few. few. The problem is not with the harvest. That is not the problem. The mm. problem is with the labors. Are we doing our part? Are we maximizing our talents? And mm. when you talk about the direct selling industry, you know, some people say, I don't like direct sales because it seems only like a handful do really, really well. And a lot of people don't, I mm -hmm. I say, I guess you don't like America. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I checked, 1% are wealthy, 3% are financially independent. The rest are struggling. I guess mm. you don't like the gym because last time I checked, even before COVID-19, a whole bunch of people were down there. January 2nd, parking lot was packed. They were five deep on a machine. But February 2nd, COVID-19 hadn't happened yet. I mean, it was crickets. What happened? Yeah. I guess you don't like insurance because out of every 100 people to get a license, only five out of 100 will even renew that license. I didn't say they were crushing it. I didn't say they were making tons of money. Only five will even renew the license. I guess you don't like business in general because we know that every 100 businesses that get started 10 years from now, only four will exist. Didn't say they were crushing it. Didn't say they were making millions. Only four even surviving or existing. It's mm. the law of the few. It has always been that way. Online dating, 3% of the people do well. And real estate just went through an incredible program over the weekend uh, mm -hmm. where it was actually doing a deep dive on real estate. Now, is that to say there's no money in real estate? No, there's no. tons of money in real estate, but we have to be the person that says, you know what? I'm going to do my part. I'm mm. going to go study that industry. I'm going to go to the things I'm supposed to do in that industry. Um, and the same, it's the same way in church. I mean, mm. how many people actually do the things we're supposed to do? Are we reading our Bible? Are we doing the devotion? Are we tithing? Are we, are we tithing? And I, I read about, you know, Italy's a very religious country and they uh -huh. did a deep dive in Italy. They said, how many people are going to church on a weekly basis? And they mm -hmm. said, well, 36% said they're going to church on a weekly basis. They mm -hmm. went down to church, found out a whole bunch of liars. <laughs> Only 18% <laughs> were showing up to church on a weekly basis. And then of the 18%, how many within were tithing, doing their part? And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, we come back to that same number, what I call the law of the few, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus talked about the few all the time, and the mm -hmm. same is true. And we can choose to be one of the few. It yes. is about choice. It is not about anything else. In the mm. book of Deuteronomy, I set before you life and yes. death. I set yes. before you blessings and curses. I right. set before you prosperity and disaster. Yeah. Choose. 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 And Come you on. can choose to be successful. You can choose to learn about any business that you're in, any mm. endeavor that you're pursuing, including direct sales. And you can choose to, in fact, have the blessing. It's not like it's some special skill. If you're willing wow. to run the numbers, you are going, in fact, have success. But that's the challenge. You have mm -hmm. to go through the numbers. That's the challenge. People are going to come by and try to steal your dream. That's mm -hmm. the challenge. People are going to try to talk you out of your blessing. That's mm -hmm. the challenge that you're going to hit mm -hmm. some hard times like Job and you mm -hmm. have to hold on to the faith. Yes. That's the challenge. The yes. road to the promised land is not an easy one. Mm -hmm. And along the way, if you do what all those you know Israelites did and you start mm -hmm. to complain, mm -hmm. in the desert you will remain. But <laughs> you can learn no matter what to be content. You can learn to give thanks in mm. all circumstances then you get into the promised land the land of milk and honey the land of abundance the land of opulence it's mm. out there for all of us but we have to do our part give thanks in all circumstances not give thanks for all circumstances mm -hmm. give thanks yeah. in all circumstances yeah. there's a difference my wife had mm. cancer we weren't thankful for <laughs> cancer but we were thankful for doctors insurance modern yeah. medicine and today obviously she's been cancer free for five yes. years yes Praise so the Lord. It's learning just to keep that positive mentality no matter what. And there's a promised land out there for everybody. I love it, man. Well, listen, before you go, because each one of our panelists is going to give us some personal information about them. Give us a 90 second commercial, if you will, about what you are doing, who is for and why. And then tell us how we can get in touch with you for those who may want to do so. Well, first and foremost, we show people how to make money from their home, right? And we do that in a couple of different ways. Number one, we happen to be in a business where we can teach people how to make money right off their mobile phone. Um, you know, they don't have to recruit anybody. They don't have to build a team or any of that type of stuff, right? Something brand new we're rolling out where you can participate in the single largest financial market in the world, a market that most people have never heard of. How's it the largest in the world have never heard of it? And you'd be surprised, like, wow, I never knew that. Teaching people how to make money right on their mobile phone. Uh, you know, you know, just trading, uh, incredible service we're rolling out. And we also teach people how to travel the world for pennies on the dollar. And some people say, are people traveling right now? We got more people traveling right now than any time in our company history, partly because you can't do anything else. I can't go to the movies. I can't go to the water park. I can't do this. But I can go down to the Wyndham Desert Blue in Las Vegas, get a two-bedroom, 
two bathroom, two balcony, full kitchen, living room, swimming pools open, all the social distancing. And so we have these resorts that people are going to for pennies on the dollar and making money on their mobile phones as they're doing it. So that's what we're teaching people to do all around the world and having a blast doing it. And how can we get in touch with you? Uh, you can uh, reach out to me on Facebook. I'm Todd Strand. Um, you can email me. I'm Todd Strand at gmail.com. Uh, or just get a hold of the pastor here. He knows how to get a hold of me. And so, and, and again, I'm not here to try to talk anyone into, into my business. There's millions of businesses out there uh, mm -hmm. that you can do. And I'm happy to help any one of you, no matter what business you choose, because it is the greatest industry in the world. And I feel like it's my calling to help other people maximize it. Absolutely. What an ambassador you are, man of God. Thank you so much. I love you. Tell Gina I said hello, and I'll see you in Vegas, my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> love you, my pastor. All right. Bless you, man. Well, we got another guest coming in. And, man, you better put your hands together. Somebody somebody put, I want some more. If, if, if that's what you want, we got a special guest, y'all. I mean... This is Proverbs 31 on Facebook with us coming on today. I want to hear somebody put it in the comments because I can't hear you put, I, I want some more. I want some more. Coach Todd just blessed us. And he, and I'm telling you, the man of God that he is, he means it. It doesn't matter what business you're in. If you're working from home, both he, my coach, and I are dedicated to help you. We have some, some things that have been very successful and, and that's what we're pledged and committed to do. Uh, but we just want to create more ambassadors who have victory and success for themselves and their families and everything connected to them. See, what, here's what happens when they say it this way. Uh, uh, rising tides lift all boats. And that's how we got that's how we got to deal with each other. That's how we got to treat. Gone should be the day where we got to feel as though to make somebody. Uh, uh, to, to, for me to win, I got to make you look bad. I got to discredit you. I got to try to shame you to make. That's that's a poor, impoverished mentality. That's not God. And if it's not God, who is it? Come on now. I got another get. All right, there you go, Minister Wayne. Thank you, Todd. I want some more. Amen, Minister Ethel. I want some more. I want some more. Amen, Lady K. I want some more. Lord, I want some more. All right. Well, let me get this Proverbs 31 in place and in position. Well, you know what? I'm supposed to read her bio because she sent me a bio real quick. And I, I want to exercise due diligence. She just gave me something. Now, listen, she could have wrote a book and sent it to me. But this is what she did. She sent me this, what I know. She's been a CPA since 1996. She's been doing taxes since 1992. Her corporate work career was from 1992 to 2007 as a staff accountant and tax director. She was the church finance manager for one of the local churches that have been doing very well from 2007 to 2010. But she currently owns her own accounting practice, and it started in 2010 to this present moment. And she is definitely my favorite CPA. She does consulting. She helps to form LLCs. She does tax planning. She guides in tax compliance. She started with 30 clients and now has more than 800 clients ranging from individuals and corporations from partnerships and as well as other types of corporate forms. She does accounting for small to medium sized businesses, nonprofits. She has three professional persons on staff and bookkeepers, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, meet Proverbs 31 personified for you on Facebook Live today, my favorite CPA, Miss Maria Smith. How are you, my dear? Thank you, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Pastor, for such a kind Good, good morning. What's that glow? I see a glow on you. Is that the glory of God? It's the glory of God. Thank you, Pastor. I believe it. I believe it. Listen, we're going to talk candidly about some of the things you do. Coach Todd shared with us, and I praise God for how he shared it and what he shared, because some people really need to catch what he, what he shared, no doubt about that. But one of the things you do, and we need you in our lives, because when you get to creating that home-based business, there are some things that if you don't do them properly or you miss them, you're leaving money on the table, money that could come back into your household. You're going to miss it. So we're going to go into that. But before we even go into that, one of the things that I, I, I want to do, I want people to know your heart first. Coach Todd, they, people know. I, I had somebody in the comments. Let me go back to that before. I, let me see if I can find. 
Uh, Diddy said, man, this guy can preach. <laughs> Minister James says, preach, brother. Trenton said, you're preaching, Todd. So we, we know what kind of stuff he's made of. Amen. And he says, Proverbs 30 on 1, I want some more. So we know what kind of stuff he's made of, but I want people to know what you're made of. I want you to talk about how God has used you as a servant to change lives through your work in the Philippines. That's the first thing I want to talk about. You have been doing such an amazing work in the Philippines, and I don't think it's been noted the way that it should. So I want, I want to really highlight it first before we even go into the business stuff, because I know for you, just like for Coach Todd, your, your business is not separate from your ministry. It's a part of your ministry. So tell us what God has been using you to do in the Philippines. Pastor, the reason why uh, when I started and I came here in America in, in 1984, uh, as a minority in this country, I wanted to do more. And that's how I became a CPA. I wanted to prove that I can be just as good as the next person in line. Uh, that's that's why I went back to school and took my accounting. For one, I wanted to help people. I also want to have an income uh, potential so I can support the ministry in the Philippines. We have a big ministry in the Philippines. Last year, we donated $71,000 from our tax fees to the Philippines. And so far this year, we are already given probably about 55000 And we're just giving God the glory uh, and praise because we're able uh, when you come to us, you're not just coming to another CPA or another accountant. You're coming to a CPA with a purpose, with a heart to serve others. My God. And woman of God, when you talk about 55,000 or 70 plus thousand, we know what that translates to here in the United States. What does that What does that do in the Philippines? It's about three to six million pesos. We can do a lot. We do a lot in the Philippines. It can do a lot. It can, we can feed a lot of people. We support pastors. We're supporting currently about 30 pastors in two different islands. It's making a big impact in the Philippines. Just like you said, we're a small company, but we're making big impacts in the mm. Philippines. So I thank right. God for that. God bless you. May God continue to anoint and bless the work of your hands. And let me just say, you've been my personal cpa lord how long how long has it been I, it's been so long <laughs> remember to be honest with you about a decade it's been about a decade hasn't it i think so some somewhere it's in that been a while. yeah and, and, you, thank and you, you and you and you kept me out of a lot of trouble and i want to thank you personally for doing that so let's get into the heart of some of the questions that i have for you uh, your work history, you, you, you demonstrated it with your bio, so we don't need to talk about that because you, you've managed all the accounting and books for churches, you've done it for businesses, and now you've had your own since 2010. Um, let me ask you this, because it's not just a home-based business for you, because you also have, uh, even though you do quite a bit from your home, but you also have an office where you have your clients to come, but you particularly service a lot of people who have home-based businesses. So I want to kind of focus and hone in on some of that today. Um, what have been some of your greatest challenges, struggles, and achievements, uh, even launching your own business? Can you tell us what those things are? Because there might be somebody watching this, they might be thinking of becoming a CPA just like you, so forth and so on. What, what, what are some of those uh, challenges, struggles, and achievements that you've, you've, you've witnessed? I think the biggest challenge I have, Pastor, is because I don't, sometimes I don't know how to balance. And I work 80 to 90 hours a week during tax season. Uh, mm. We continue to grow. So with that, growing comes with growing pains. Um, but the biggest achievement that I have since I have experienced since I own my own business is just be able to do ministry and be able to talk about what I'm passionate about to every single client of ours. I talk to them about what we do and I thank I get to thank them for allowing me to serve them because part of the fees they give us goes on to the Philippines. That's the that's the biggest joy that we get. It's not just about making money, it's about you coming to us and we can truly serve you. 
Wow. Wow. So you've obviously told us what your typical day looks like, because if you sometimes are doing 90 hours a week, Woo, Lord, that look, you might be giving Kendra, Kendra keys a run for her money. It looked like I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared. Is that contagious? It's very contagious. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it away from you. Not a lot of people that do it, Pastor. I have a lot of staff, but they, they can't do it. They'll be working 40 and by 45, but 45 hours already, they're frowning. But I thank God for the energy and the passion, though. Amen. Now, let me ask you this. Back in the day before I had met you, there were times, years that at the last minute I would struggle doing my own stuff, putting my little stuff together. And, you know, I had my little computer and I pushed stuff through. And then I thought I got fancy. Then I went to, I think, uh, I can't remember the name of home, something, what, 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 one of, a couple of the different companies out there that would do taxes. And then, and then God blessed me with you in my life. But for the benefit of those who don't know, you know, they like to do it themselves or they like h and Block and all those and, and shout out to them. They, they good and all that. But but you, Lord have mercy, the returns and things that I they you, you've saved me from doing things right and making sure it was on point and you ministered to me and you brought a whole lot of money back into our household that we were missing out on. What's the difference between someone just doing it themselves or going to get one of the cookie cutter type things and using you or someone like you as a professional? What's the difference? The difference, Pastor, is really the first and foremost is you gotta have, I have to have the right, the right heart to serve. It's not about every client we see. It's not about the dollars that we see, but can we serve you? Can we represent you or can your financial statement be represented uh, correctly or properly? A lot of times uh, we're full, full service accounting so we can do tax planning. A lot of people will do their accounting but in, or, or they wait until the end of the year to come to us. By that mm -hmm. time, we couldn't help them anymore but file their taxes. Tax mm -hmm. planning is very important. And a lot of people can do accounting, can do bookkeeping. They can do the profit and loss, but what can you do with that information? Some of our clients, a lot of our clients would want us to do uh, banking, uh, information for loans. So it's mm -hmm. so important that you know your profit and loss on a monthly basis. Even in a home-based business, you got to mm -hmm. treat it like a real business. So you know what's coming in and what's going out. So that when you can plan accordingly, it's okay to make a lot of money. But with a lot of money, you have to pay taxes. A lot of people won't do tax planning. And that's what we can be value added to our clients. I love it. I love it. Because as you know, there are a whole bunch of folk that made a lot of money, but then they got in trouble because of the money they made because they didn't realize the tax man knew where they lived and came looking for them. So thank you for, for what it is that you help many people to do. Now let's talk about this. Let's get into some of the nitty, nitty gritty. And I, and I want people to, if they need to, to reach out to you for some private consultation, which you do for free. You're very busy. So they have to make sure that if they really want your service, they're going to get in touch with you and they keep the appointment and all that type of stuff. And what you show them that you can do by a free consultation. But what are the benefits of owning any type of home-based business. I mean, that's one of the things I love about you. When when I showed you our businesses and such, you were able to say this. Th I mean, you pointed out so matter-of-factly, like it was like you knew exactly what we needed to do, when we needed to do, and so forth and so on. What are the benefits of owning any type of home-based business? Pastor, thank you for asking that. The biggest benefit of owning a home-based business is the earning potential. For a small amount of investment, you have a you could potential great return if you treat it like a real business. When mm -hmm. I opened my business, the salon, the first business I opened was a salon pastor. We mm -hmm. spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, wow. two more than two hundred thousand dollars, pastor. Mm -hmm. In a home based business like what you have, for small amount, you have a great potential of the of the great return. Mm -hmm. And, and secondly, the tax advantages of the write-offs uh, for having a home-based business as well. But you have to do it right. You have to do it right. No no okie doke. <laughs> hey, you got on me pretty good. You hurt my feelings a couple of times, but but I, I was all right. Thank, thank you for hurting my feelings. Uh, I told you I was going to do better. I told you I was going to do better. 
So you got to make sure you, you're watching this broadcast, you're listening to a professional CPA, and she's giving us some behind-the-scenes stuff uh, about her own business as a CPA. I would encourage you. We're going to give you her information in a moment. I would encourage you to reach out to her if you have any professional questions, uh, free consultation just to, to, to give you some, some advisement on that. But what she does, she does well, and she's letting us know that when you own a home-based business, she's also owned and still does traditional businesses, as she just mentioned, that she invested hundreds of thousands of dollars to start and to maintain the operation of. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are many great businesses on the traditional sense uh, that still are operating that way and, and should. However, most people don't have the wherewithal to even do that. But in the case of a home-based business, in most cases, you can start, I mean, well below $1,000, sometimes much below that, and turn profits quite readily if, I love what she said, you treat it as a business. So let me ask you this. Why do so many people fail in working inside of a home-based business? business. What has been your experience? It's their belief system, Pastor, their mindset. They mm. don't know how to do the paradigm shift. You know, people think that uh, when their their faith falters, when they don't make money on the first few months of business. Mm -hmm. And additionally, their expectation is a hey, Pastor Mel brought me in. Pastor Mel should be making me money. No, mm. I I'm responsible for building my own business. We have mm -hmm. to change the way we think. Think of what? it as a real business. And just like I said, we spend a lot of money on a traditional business. Here's a business that for hardly a nothing, we can have a great potential return. But it's really the way we think. We have to change the way we think. Treat it like a real business. Mm -hmm. Get up every morning and have a purpose to make business grow, not just whenever. It's that attitude that I'll do it whenever I feel like it. Mm. But yet we get up every morning to work for somebody. Ooh. We have an opportunity to work for ourselves, to make that financial independence depending on our own effort, with, through our own effort. Mm. Because so I have worked for corporate and I work 75, 80 hours for somebody. Here we can work to, for ourselves and make it happen for ourselves. Wow, that is so encouraging because you, you're just telling the truth. Now you're speaking the truth in love, what we said earlier today. The, the reality is so many people go into working from home and they experience failure. Well, there's failure everywhere. And there's failure in all things as a part of the process, especially if we don't even follow the system and plug in and apply ourselves. And if we did half the stuff that we do working for someone else for ourselves oh my god we would be so much further ahead so i got a couple of other questions for you let me ask you this give me your own personal but professional belief about having multiple streams of income well pastor to, to be honest if a lot more people would have done uh streams of different streams of income, it would have helped a lot of people during this pandemic. Mm. We see that. I have uh, I have friends that are that are doing better while this with the crisis we're doing. It should be more having a multiple stream of income pastor should be a way of life. Mm. So if something happens, somebody let you go from a traditional job, you could do something. You don't you don't go into a panic mode. So that's what happens. But we have to, just like I said, we got to change the way we do business, the way we think for ourselves. It would have helped tremendously. I've, I've, you know, I see a lot of people and I also see people that are doing home-based business uh, and they're doing well. And mm -hmm. their testimony is, yes, I lost my job, but, you know, I was able to replace it with my home-based business mm. and working for themselves. Wow. It, it should be the way of life. It, we should have that instead of just working for for part time. For part, you can do it part time or full time. Mm -hmm. Some people do it full time and they make millions out of it. Mm -hmm. There is truly potential of making a fin 
towards financial independence if we just be serious about it and believe that we can do it. I love that. That's powerful. That's powerful. Last question for you. And I want you to bring this because you're, you're in the Lord. You're, you're a minister of the gospel. Um, so I want you to speak particularly to the body of Christ. In this segment of time, this season, COVID has impacted everything. We're about to enter the last quarter of the year. As a professional CPA, what advice would you give someone who's pretty much messed up the the, <laughs> the first part of the year and up to been kind of jacked up? In fact, it's been kind of jacked up for a while. What advice could you give us from a tax professional perspective concerning home-based business for this last quarter? Give us a few call to actions for us before uh, you tell us about how we can reach out to you. You need to track your income and expenditures on a monthly basis. Get your receipts together, not on December 31st, not in January. It's too late by then. You got to get your receipts together, know what you're spending, take a picture of it, scan it, uh, and don't wait on your mileage. Mileage is your friend. It's 57 cents a mile. So make it your telephone, all the expenses that you're already spending. You know, when you go somewhere, when you go somewhere, make it a business, make it a business purpose. I don't go anywhere past her without thinking everywhere I go, whether I'm at Las Palapas or wherever, I have an yeah. opportunity to meet somebody. Yes. I'm going to give my card. I'm at yeah. McDonald's. I'm giving my card. Why? I am my own marketing. I do my own marketing. So every person I meet is a potential for me to create a business relationship. Mm. Therefore, I'm going to write off my miles because I'm not just going there. Yes, I'm going there to eat. I'm going to meet with people. But your mileage, your telephone, your office in the home, get all those together before year end. This is the this is the best time to do it. So mm -hmm. if you know, if you have another stream of income in your linear income, you want to know how can this home based business help me with my linear income? Mm. Can it help me with my taxes? Mm. Or can will it hurt me in my taxes because I made a lot of money that I have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. If you're a home based business, unless you're a corporation or a, a, co a partnership or a small corporation, 1120S filer, you're going to owe self-employment tax. And that's 15.3%. Mm. Tax planning is very important in everything we do in business, Pastor. Wow. Thank you so much. I know there's so much more that we can learn from you, but for the sake of time, I want you to give us some information about how we can reach out to you and what type of free consultation you'll be able to offer people in this season prior to 2021 arriving. So I'm available, Pastor, as you know, you can reach me though to texting or through Facebook messaging to my email. It's mariasmithcpa at gmail.com. And my phone number is 210-488-0168. I can also provide my business card. We do, I do give free consultation, but I do ask that you make an appointment. So I can, uh, right now, Pastor, we're not seeing a lot of clients, but you can call me, we can FaceTime, and you can, um, this is the perfect time to ask for a lot of consulting because it's not tax season. It's hard for me to do it during tax season. So this is a perfect Absolutely. time for everybody. Wow. Woman of God, thank you so very much. We'll be getting in touch with you. And uh, thank you for all you do, uh, not just for Kendra and I, but for the Joshua House of Worship and people everywhere. 800 plus clients, that's a lot. But I believe that you're about to get even more. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. God bless God you, bless darling. everyone. Thank you for allowing me to be your Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you heard that information. Now, she could talk all day, y'all, about some stuff. She was holding back because I know she probably got to go take care of somebody's books and accountants today, uh, accounting today. But do yourself a favor. I want to ask our administrator to put Maria's number into uh, the feed, into the comment and her email. So that way, uh, anybody who would like to reach out and touch bases with her, maybe you have someone on your own. That's fine. Uh, this is not anything you're not being forced or coerced. Or, or or any of those types of things. This I, I'm trying to present. I'm doing what God gave me to do. That's what I'm going to do to the best of my ability. If it helps you, which I know it will, 
If it helps you, to God be the glory. If it ain't for you, to God be the glory. Amen. So do what you need to do. Reach out to her if you need to. And I promise you, I promise you, from 10 years of experience, you'll be the better for it. I have a couple of others that I want to bring into the broadcast. Let me see if I can get a hold of, let me see, any, meeny, miny, mo. There we go. Not going to let you go. <laughs> we have another wonderful couple this time that are entrepreneurs at heart. And they have been in this space for, for a, a, short, a much shorter period of time. But I wanted to give them the opportunity to share their personal opportunity as well. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read their bio, but I will tell you this. They've been married for eight years. Um, wonderful couple, Kendra and I. Thank God for their support and their leadership towards the marriage enrichment, which has been put on hold because of all this going on with COVID crisis. But uh, they are the persons who help us to do what we need to at this point. Uh, for our marriage enrichment ministry and Minister Wayne is one of our new ministers at the Joshua House of Worship pretty much I think he was born in the eighth row on the left side uh, his mother gave birth there in the sanctuary for him uh, just a few years ago and uh, they've been married and uh, we are grateful for them and their children so without any further ado we have Mr. and Mrs. Wayne and Dawn Sheridan good morning to you good morning, good morning. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I, I, I noticed you were laughing about that, but it's probably true. <laughs> but let's go right into the heart of stuff. I just wanted to give, give you an opportunity, and I'm not even going to really ask you any particular questions. I want you to just give us about three minutes of speaking from your hearts of what being an entrepreneur with the opportunity to work from home has meant to you why it's so important why it's so valuable who is it for who is it not for because nothing is for everybody but the lord but who is it for and what they can do to get in touch with you so i'm going to go ahead and just give you the space to do that in about three minutes and we have one more guest after that um well so what makes it so great for us is um I recently had to stop working uh, in nursing be due to health issues. And so having a home-based business actually opens up the opportunity to be able to do what I need to do while I'm healthy enough to do it. And then when I'm not, I don't have to worry about if I'm still getting income coming in or not because it still streams even when I'm not working. Um, we we both are insurance licensed uh i'm currently studying still to get my um investment license so that we can do investments as well um but it's been eye-opening uh i always had an issue talking to people that i don't know um but having a home-based business has pulled me out of myself basically to go and talk with people and i think in and that's what God really wants from us is to be able to talk and to disciple to people, um, not only about um, their finances, but also um, about who he is and what he expects of us here on this earth. That's good. So this is my Proverbs 31 uh, blessing here. We honestly, we believe in multiple streams of income uh, and it has truly been a blessing to us during this crisis as everyone keeps commenting on. But, um, you know, when we started this uh, last year, or almost, I guess it's been almost, almost a year, years. two years now, almost two, two years. years. Uh, but um, we really got the ball rolling. I, I'd say it was last year when things really kicked off really good for us. And uh, we, we, you know, we made some, some business changes, things like that, some connections. Um, this year it has paid off in dividends because uh, at times when we didn't have anything specifically lined up or didn't have anything going, um, we turn around and look and there's a deposit in the bank account. Mm -hmm. What we weren't exactly expecting. And it kind of like, oh, wow. Okay. So this is from that. Yep. That's from that. Okay. Well, great. You know, and, and it's truly been a blessing uh, to, to be able to know that that's something that we could actually look back and, and kind of rely on is coming. But uh, at the same time, you know, 
we've we've put ourselves in a position now under uh, uh, Peter and, and Nelly Piedrina, which were our coaches that were on last week, uh, mm -hmm. to learn from them. Uh, Don's pretty much taking lead on this right now with me stepping back into the workforce. But and we did that uh, in order to get our household in order to mm -hmm. line things up. I mean, what what that looks like for everyone is different. But we've we've actually gone through the plan that they laid out before saying, you know, uh, let's sit down and let's look at your income. Let's look at your bills. Let's 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 make a plan. Well, for us, the way the plan worked out is for me to go back in the work full time so that we actually had some kind of in additional income coming in to make things work properly so that mm -hmm. we can now invest and we, that's what which we've been doing uh we can invest we can we can take and put the income protection in place uh mm -hmm. and, and do those types of things and so we we've we've paid off some debts and we're working on more and uh that's that's been a a big step in this uh for us uh as being able to still have that goal of okay one day you know we're going to retire each other uh, mm -hmm. from, you know, working the nine to five, mm -hmm. uh, Don is, is now because of COVID. Well, she's completely retired from, from the, uh, nursing state right now. Um, and I don't know if she'll ever want to go back to it or anything like that, but with what I do, I, I do love what I do as a technician. Uh, but eventually I'm, I'm probably going to want to hang that up. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and this is our way of doing that, uh, you know, with, with, the the business that we are a part of and we do enjoy helping other people it's it's what we believe is in our calling for both of us um everyone wants to know what their 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 blessings are their their uh, their gifts and talents we believe we're part of the helps uh and that's that's what we do so we help uh if, if it's possible if there's any way that we can uh that's what we in, we, we, we will do uh we don't have a problem trying to help someone when we can and and if we can't we'll tell you I love it. I want to ask you one last question. Do you necessarily distinguish that this is not your ministry? Or do you see what you do in financial services providing for uh, the clients that you help, you service, as a part of your ministry? How, how does it resonate? Uh, we've not spoken about this, but how does it resonate to both of you? Um, so one of the biggest things that why we got into this, because in the Bible, it says to leave an inheritance for your children's children. And in what we're doing, basically, we're teaching people to be able to do that. Um, and it's things that I didn't learn as a child and that most people didn't learn in because they don't really teach it in school unless you actually take those classes in college. Mm -hmm. But in most parents, if they don't know it, they can't teach it. Mm. So. I think that that's where God uses us to help people fulfill um, his promises in his Bible. Wonderful. And uh, to answer your question as to who it's for, um, honestly, this is one of those things that I, I would like to say is for everybody. But as you said, not everything is for everybody outside of Jesus. Um, mm -hmm. if, if as far as who it can help, it can help everybody. Uh, as far as doing it as a business goes, it's going to be for those people that are um, self-driven that that want something more uh, mm -hmm. that that can can get in line to follow the process they don't mind being taught something different uh, mm -hmm. yeah we have we've had the opportunity to have a, a, a great group of people that we are part of and uh, that even before COVID happened uh, mm -hmm. the organization the company was using that we're all in this together thing before COVID happened mm -hmm. that's what they believe is we, we are all in this together this is life and if we don't go through it together, then you you will fail. Uh, so success success doesn't just come by one person doing what they do. Success comes by multiple people doing the things that they do in order for everybody to succeed. I love that. Teamwork makes the dream work. I promise. Last question. I promise. I promise this time. Last question. But this is good stuff, guys. I hope you're getting something out of this. Last question. You're working together, husband and wife. I mean, you're home together and you're working together. What are the benefits that God has given you? What's your personal testimony very quickly of what working on a mutual vision for the economic good of your family, your household, your legacy? What, what does that do for you? 
Well, first of all, we've learned in our marriage that whenever we try to do things separately, it never works. Right. Whenever we come together and we do it together, it always grows and prospers. Wow. So that's something that we've learned with ourselves. Yeah, I, I, I think of it uh, and I don't I'm not trying to in no way compare us to them, but I think of it like Aquila, Aquila and Priscilla, you know, yeah. they work together building tents yeah. and had a great prosperous business in doing so. Um, mm -hmm. I like to think the same thing here. We when we work together, things just work. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's just that's God's blessing his hand on it. But um, for the most part, I wouldn't want to do it any other way. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to bring up another rock star. But before I do, Coach Todd says, prosper together. Minister Ethel says they are awesome. Coach says, great story. Uh, we have the address for Maria. We'll put that up again. Uh, Minister Ethel says, I love you. Minister James says, do I know them? <laughs> All right. Well, we have another guest, and I'm going to bring her up. She'll be our last guest. But man, when I tell you, I am so proud of her. We had conversation years ago, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I told her she was a rock star. She didn't believe me. But look at her now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the rock star herself. <laughs> What's up, rock star? Hey. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Bless you or something else. Do you remember that conversation? Do you remember that conversation? You yeah. like you was in the night. Yeah, yeah. You were in rock star denial. And then one day I looked up with a Facebook live and you've done 10 million Facebook lives. I'm like, oh, she's doing more lives than I do. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm telling you. Kendra just got her package from you, so thank you for sending it out. We're so excited for you. But what I want you to do, I want you to take about three minutes, as the Sheridans did, and tell your story about why entrepreneur, what entrepreneurship is to you, why you went into it, although you never thought you would, um, who is for, who is not for, who is for, and especially now in this era we are in now, what's what's the meaning and, and the essential nature of it, the urgency behind it? Tell your story. Well, um, I never thought I'd be in my own, uh, have my own business. Like, uh, I used to be very shy, you know, you know, Pastor. <laughs> and uh, just never thought I would see myself doing live videos, never in a million years. But uh, <laughs> uh, it just like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, First of all, I became a customer of this uh, jewelry, and then um, my sponsor convinced me, like, hey, why don't you go in your own business, and uh, instead of uh, paying $5, you know, you can buy this jewelry for $275. i am like, hey, that's right, you know, I can afford that. All right. um, so I went into it. It's been uh, two and a half years already. And, wow. Um, yeah, two and a half years already, how time flies. And um, it's just been like a huge blessing to me. Oh my God, especially during this pandemic, like, um, because I thought I was gonna be out of a job. I have two jobs right now, working mm -hmm. for the Air Force almost 30 years as a contractor. Mm -hmm. And um, it was already nearing the end of my contract when the mm -hmm. pandemic hit. So I thought, mm -hmm. oh, they're not gonna renew us. You know, there's no way, you know, we have to work from home and, it was so unorganized and we didn't know what we were going to do, how we were going to do it. We just know we could not go back to the building. So I thought, okay, I'm going to have to do this full time. And, um, which is great because, you know, we do the lives from home. You got your website, people can shop at all that good stuff. Uh, so I ended up, you know, being able to telework day job and then plus do this, uh, evenings and weekends. And, um, it's just uh, been a huge blessing. Um, it has allowed me to pay off a lot of my debt, like a lot. And um, I never thought uh, I'd be where I'm at now. I, I was able to hit higher levels and I'm a director now. I have a team under me. Um, the rewards incentives are amazing. Um, so, and I love the fact that, um, 
I can do, uh, there's so many different ways, you know, you can sell this product, but the lives is the main thing and you can do it from home. So that's fantastic. Um, but uh, it's just been wonderful um, to be able to do this, meet all the people that I've met, met. They're like such a huge blessing to me. Like a lot of uh, my customers have became my friends. Mm -hmm. we, oh, see each other sometimes for dinner, whatever, every now and then. I mean, it's just wonderful. Are you um, keeping your receipts? I'm sorry? Are you keeping your receipts? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, <definitely. laughs> oh, yeah. Every receipt. Every receipt. All right. <laughs> yes, I do. You better believe it. Um, but anyway, it's enabled me to um, decide to do this full time. So as I was telling you uh, the other day, I turned in my letter of resignation. That's almost Please. 30 years working for the Air Force as a contractor. The income is fantastic, but uh, this working these two jobs has, you know, allowed me to pay off a lot of debt and to the point where I decided, you know what, I don't want to have a boss anymore. I want to be my own boss, you know? And uh, so, yes, I turned in my letter of resignation. My last day is the 22nd and I'm so excited, Pastor. Last night I got oh. work that um, someone wants to join my team. So Go I'm already, Nancy! <laughs> so I'm already growing my team again, yes. and I'm just so excited. Um, mm -hmm. I have prayed so, so much about this. You know, it's been like a year that I've been thinking about it, but I'm like, no, you know, I owe too much. You know, mm -hmm. I'm thinking negative, right? Thinking right. negative. God, mm -hmm. please. Tell me what I should do. Talk to me, Lord. And mm -hmm. here, recently, he's been showing me over and over. Take that step of faith, and I will show you how far I can take you. Like, he mm -hmm. has just been showing me over and over. And I'm like, okay. And, Pastor, it was the hardest thing to do to submit that letter of resignation. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I was hesitating, hesitating. I was like, oh, give me strength, God. Give me strength, you know. Wow. And he did, and I hit that send, and I send it, and I'm like, oh, just like, wow, huge relief, load off mm -hmm. my shoulders, and I am so excited about where God's mm -hmm. going to take me with this. Oh, yeah. So I, I just can't say enough good things about it. Uh, it's something that's very affordable, you know, We and a lot more men have be uh, become consultants as well. Really? Okay. Uh, a lot of men. We have a awesome men's line now, and uh, okay. children's. Uh, just it's you got to be very passionate about jewelry. You mm -hmm. gotta want to pay off your debts. You just uh, want to meet people, interact with people. Uh, mm -hmm. so you can do all that. I mean, yeah, this is uh, the business for you. So mm -hmm. it, it's just fantastic. I can't say enough of good um, good things about it. It's been a huge mm -hmm. blessing. It really has. Oh my god. I am so happy and proud of you. I want everybody to celebrate Nancy. She is a faithful <laughs> member. And let me also say, she puts God first in her stewardship without fail. Let me ask you this, Nancy. How do you use your business in line with your Christian ministry as a child of God? How, how does it fit into... Your, your your business and who it is God has called you to be. How, how are they connected, if at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. During my lives, like, oh, yeah, I will boast about God. And people know that about me. I'm not only posting, you know, scriptures and prayers and things like that, but I'm talking about it on my lives, you know. And um, I always say a prayer before I go live. And um People just know that about me. Sometimes they'll message me in private like, hey, I have this going on. Can you please pray for me or pray with me? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. Um, because I love using the word of God to encourage people. So many people have gotten to know that are going through so much. They're, they've lost loved ones to the COVID. They're going through a lot of grief, uh, lost their jobs, you know. So um, that's where God comes in. And I'm like, mm -hmm. God just give me the words to speak to this person you know wow. they need encouragement they need that comfort so um but i also do it during my lives you know uh i have actually like just stopped my life and prayed for somebody and, and asked the people you know pray with me right now we're gonna pray for this person you know we really mm -hmm. 
pray. So I want you to come with me and pray. So yeah, it, it's been awesome. And to be able to do that live with a bunch of people, you know, it's mm. just, it's just amazing. So would you say that God is increasing your territory to represent him and give him the glory through your business? Uh, Absolutely. Yes. I have customers all over the U.S. right now, and I'm so excited about that. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Look at the, look at the Lord and look at our newest rock star. Y'all make sure y'all give us some love. Give us the information how we can connect with you. Those who may want to uh, go ahead and connect, how do they do so? And I want to make sure that when you're I know that this is our, our study guide that we've been every Wednesday. We want you to make sure you dig into this, Nat. Okay. For you and your team. Dig into that. It's going to bless you and your team. Give us your information. How can we connect with you? Uh, my phone number, 210-863-1581. I'm on Facebook. Um, you can search Accessory Addiction by Nancy. Uh, that's my group VIP page. Um, but definitely the main way is my uh, phone number. You can message me. I mean, text me, call me, um, or on Facebook. That's where I do the majority of my business on Facebook. But I am expanding now to Instagram and other uh, areas now, of social media. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm so proud I don't know what to do. Well, we love you. Give 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 our boy some love for me. Tell him tell him we need to spend some time together. And uh I'm gonna put you back in the lobby, but don't go too far, okay? okay. And type and type in your phone number and all your details in the comments on the feed so that they can see it for us. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I need to do something. I mean it's in my spirit, but I need I need to get I need to get ten people in agreement. If I get 10 people in agreement, I'm going to do it. Now, listen, I know that time is of the essence and we're at one o'clock. But today's special, I told you we were going to be out of the box. I told you we were not going to be on the shore, that we we're going to launch out into some deep water. If you need to uh, go ahead and you got other places to be and things to do and people to see and all that, I totally understand. I ain't mad at you. Come on back and catch the replay. But I need 10 people. If I can, if I can get 20 minutes of your time, I got something I'm going to share with you. It's going to blow your mind, and then we're going to have our, 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 our worshiper come back and give her heart to God in song. It's going to bless us. I want Mariah to be ready, uh, but I need to hear from 10 people that I can get 20 minutes. I need to hear from 10 people that I can give. Actually, I don't even need 20, but just put 20 in there. Be generous. Don't be stingy. I need to get 10 people to say I can have 20 minutes. I need to hear from y'all quickly, and if I can get 10 people that's going to say it, I'm going to share. I'm going to bless you with something right now. I'm going to do it right now. But I need to hear from you. I need to hear from 10 people that I can get 20 minutes and I'm going to bless you. Go ahead and put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. <laughs> he said, I like that. I got five on it. All right. <laughs> Mr. Cal, that's two. All right. I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. Now, if you need to dismiss yourself, then... Now, I ain't mad at you. Do what you got to do. I need 10. I got two. I need eight more people very quickly because I'm going to share something with you. There you go. Thank you, D. That's three. Oh, uh oh. That's three. Thank you, DD. Thank you, my queen. That's uh, four. I need six more. I need to hear from six more. Thank you, Laura. I'm going to bless you. Man, it's going to bless you. I'm telling you, I'm excited for myself that you're going to be blessed. All right, there you go. That's, uh, I need five more. Uh, Trent, man, I ain't, come on, man. I need, I need, I need five more people to give me 20 minutes. Five, now, if you got places to be, go ahead and go where you got to go, do what you got to do. But somebody about to get blessed. Somebody about to get blessed. My dad, <laughs> my dad said, here, here I is. All right, that, that, that's, 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 that's plucky for, that's 20. Y'all don't understand. All right. All right. Dr. Kim. Dr. Kim says, okay, I need, I think I need two more. I need two more, two more, two more. Give me two more. Give me two more. If you give me two more, we're going to push it right on in. All right. Trent just gave me, all right. He just gave me the extra 15. There we go. I need one more, one more, and I'm going to bless you with some. I need one more person, and I'm going to bless you, and I promise you what a blessing it is, and then we're going to have a baby girl to come lift her heart in song, and we'll do the invitation and the stewardship, and then we'll have our benediction, but it's all about change. I need one more person that's going to give me 20 minutes, and I actually, I don't even need 20. It's going to be less than that. It's going to be less than that. Thank you, Nancy, for putting your information up. 
There you go. Minister Ethel says, I am here. I take it that that's the 20. All right, I'll take it. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to screen share with you very quickly. I want you to watch this uh, for yourself. And it's going to bless you in all kind of ways. Let's see if I can make it happen. Give me just one moment to pull this up. I want you to subscribe to something. I'm going to give you the subscription information in a moment. Let me know when you can see the screen of Dr. Lynn Richardson. I want you to subscribe to her on YouTube. And I also want you to uh, go to her website. Um, I'm not going to tell you to do anything that I'm not already done myself. Let me know when you can see it. Let me know when you can see the screen. It's coming up on mine, so it must be on yours. Here we go. I want you to take some accurate notes. Again, subscribe to Dr. Lynn Richardson on YouTube and go to her uh, website, which I'll give to you in just a moment. This is one of her various episodes. It's called Wealthy Wednesday. I know the day is Sunday, but we're going to act like it's Wednesday. All right. <laughs> We're going to act like it's wealth day. All right. And I want you to hear this from this woman of God who has done a tremendous uh, work as an ambassador of everything that we've talked about today. But let me just share this with you. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. It's not very long, but I'm going to go ahead and hit play. OK, I have something to tell you that you may not want to hear, but it's the truth. And I want you to get it and I want you to do something about it. In order for there to be rich people, there have to be poor people. Let me repeat, in order for there to be rich people, there have to be poor people. That's the current system that we live in. Rich people create things that poor people buy. Rich people build companies. Were you hearing it now? I want to make sure that you were hearing that last portion. Somebody, thank y'all for letting me know that you couldn't hear it. Let me know very quickly if you can hear it now so I can go ahead and get it back on. Or is it still muted? Still muted. That's unusual. Let me see. I'm going to try one more thing. And if it doesn't work, let's see. Let me repeat, in order for there to be rich people, there have to be poor people. That's what the about system what? that we live in. Rich people create things that poor people buy. What about now? Rich people build companies that poor people work in. Rich people now? then okay. go and create other streams of income and passive income while poor people try Okay, I have something to tell you that you may not want to hear, but it's the truth, and I want you to get it, and I want you to do something about it. In order for there to be rich people, there have to be poor people. Let me repeat. In order for there to be rich people, there have to be poor people. That's the current system that we live in. Rich people create things that poor people buy. Rich people build companies that poor people work in. 
Rich people then go and create other streams of income and passive income, while poor people try to figure out how they're gonna get from one moment to the next, one day to the next. You understand what I mean? Let me check the Monday. That means you get paid on Friday, you kick it on the weekend, you pay on your past due bills, and by Monday you're broke. I was living that lifestyle, making eighty, ninety thousand dollars a month, not a year, a month. And guess what? Even though I was making that amount of money, I still was a poor person. So in order for you to flip the script on this, and I want you to understand that there is something that could happen to bring us all to a state of equality. Let's take the economic stimulus, for example. When they start sending out stimulus checks for $2,000, I get real confused because I'm not stimulated by that at all. If you want to stimulate me, this is what I say. Put some more zeros on the check. Don't you agree? <laughs> Put some more zeros on the check. If you want to stimulate me, if you want to stimulate us, but they would never do that. So let's just say, for example, if every American were to get a million dollars, right? A million dollars. And with that million dollars, they were able to pay off their mortgages, start their retirement, um, pay off their debt, uh, maybe fund a business, um, have the appropriate resources to make that business grow and to make it grow quickly. Then if you didn't make it after that, then I guess we just say, oh, well, you missed your chance. But what you have to understand is that scenario would never, ever happen. There would never be a scenario where everybody would be made equal at the same time and given the same opportunity. Why? Because if everybody had a million dollars, then nobody would go and work at the food, fast food restaurant. If everybody had a million dollars, nobody would go and work at the big department store. If everybody had a million dollars, nobody would go and work at the gas station or any of these other places. So you must see and understand that in order for there to be rich people, there must be poor people who are desperate enough to take the jobs that are available, even though those jobs rob you of their income, those jobs rob you of your time, those jobs rob you of your creativity, and those jobs rob you of your ability to generate massive wealth. Now, am I saying nobody should have a job? Absolutely not. We should all have a job. But in having a job, you need to understand that there are three kinds of income. And the great majority of people, uh, the 1% of the people make the great majority of the wealth, while the other 99% are struggling trying to figure it out. And what the other 99% are struggling trying to figure out is how they're going to ever work another job or work enough jobs to make enough money to live their dreams. And the truth is, it's usually not possible. There were a group of people, um, it was the last group to uh, pass uh, this phase, uh, the baby boomers were able to work a job for 34 years retire and get enough money to live comfortably in retirement. That is no longer the case. So you must understand that there are three types of income. The first type of income is earned income. Earned income is the income that you get when you trade your time for money, when you go to a job. Remember, I was broke as all get out. I was living check to two o'clock, okay? That means you get paid at eight o'clock in the morning by two o'clock your check is gone. And I thought back in those days that I could just work harder and work harder and work harder and make enough money. Well, that formula did not prove successful. And the truth is, the more money you make, the more the IRS will take. So earned income is basically, it's it, it faces the law of diminishing returns because at some point, you just can't keep working. If you work 40 hours a week and make $10,000 a month, if you work 80 hours a week, do you think you're going to double uh, to $20,000 a month if you work 120 hours a week? No, because by the time you start working 120 hours a week, the quality of your work is going to diminish. So you'll never be able to work enough hours. You'll never be able to work enough hours to keep up. The second problem with earned income is it's taxed the worst. The IRS treats earned income in the most, uh, you know, it's in last place. Because when you have earned income, First, you have to earn the money and then pay taxes on the entire amount that you earn. It gives no regard for your expenses. It gives no regard for all the bills that you have to pay. So it's the worst kind of uh, income. And you can be taxed as high as 50%, okay? As high as 50%. So earned income is income that you get when you trade your time for money. That's what we were all taught. Go to school, get a good education, get a good job. Go to church on Sunday, wear clean up, wear clean up, wear clean up, wear clean That's what my grandmother told me. But the whole idea was to go and get a good job. Now, I want you to get good jobs, but I don't want you to just stay there with a good job. Because the second type of income is income from investments or capital gains. 
Um, that simply means maybe you buy stock for $10 and it goes up and down to $200 and you get to liquidate that stock and or you get to earn dividends from those investments. Now, capital gains income or the second kind of income. This is income from investments and capital gains. This is called portfolio income, okay? So there's a couple of different ways you can label it. It's either capital gains, investments, portfolio income. This kind of income is not taxed as high as earned income, okay? So it gets treated a little more favorably. So you've got the first kind of income being earned income, trading time for money. You've got the second kind of income being money that you invest and then you earn income from the money that you invest. But here's the third kind of income, and this is the best kind of income. This is passive income. This is income that you earn whether you work or not. This is income that you earn, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to wake up, you don't have to go to sleep, you can just drift off onto the beach if you want to. Passive income, the main source of passive income is income from a business. If you can start a business, and then you can set up proper systems in that business, so other people can work in the business, and then you can stop working, okay? The business will continue to make money. The third thing about that, or the best thing about this business income, this third kind of income, is it has the most favorable tax benefit. Robert Kiyosaki says it. Uh, Mitt Romney follows it. The president follows it. All kind of wealthy people follow this theory of business because what happens with business income, when you earn the income, first the IRS says deduct all of your expenses that you use during business. So if you use your cell phone, if you took a business trip, if you drive your car, if you hire your kids, all of these things that you can do, the IRS says over 400 times, hundreds of times, that if you have a business, not only am I going to put you in a position where you have passive income, but you are also going to pay less taxes. This is why the rich are getting richer, and this is why the poor are still trying to figure it out. Now let me tell you something. We are in a season right now of opportunity. This is massive opportunity. Please do not get this wrong. Please do not get dismayed, confused, or, or fall into a state of delusion regarding what's happening in our economy right now. What's happening in our economy right now is three things. This economy is creating millionaires, billionaires, and witnesses. Which one are you going to be? Millionaires, billionaires, and witnesses. Which one are you going to be? So how are you going to transfer from being solely focused on earned income? Earned income, remember, it's trading time for money. You're going to meet the law of diminishing returns. The law of diminishing returns basically says that the more you put in, the less you'll get out. That's really what happens. The more money you make, the more the IRS will take. I remember my first $20,000 check. I thought I was going to get about $17,000 after taxes. The check was like $9,000. I thought I was going to pass out and die, literally. But I couldn't pass out and die because I needed my money, okay? So <laughs> I called the IRS. People say, well, why don't you call the IRS? Because they're the ones who had my money. And when uh, I spoke to a holding agent, I learned what a valuable lesson, that I was going to be taxed more and more and more and more uh, the more money I made. So earned income is the worst kind of income because you're trading time for money. You're eventually going to run out of time and you're going to run out of money as well because the IRS is going to tax way more than the IRS, than it taxes on other kinds of income. The second kind of income is income from capital gains, investments. It's called portfolio income. You can make some investments. Put some money in an IRA. Put some money in a 401k. Start a mutual fund. Start small, $25, $10. Go to my website at askland.org. Submit your inquiry. Wait for your reply. Set up a consultation with me. Join the Entrepreneurs Academy so I can teach you and show you what to do. It doesn't, you don't have to start big. You don't have to start big. As a matter of fact, you don't have to start uh, any use. You don't, you don't, all you have to do is start. That's all you have to do is start. The third kind of income this is where my passion and everything just jumps out. Business income. There's so many businesses. I'm going to start teaching how to start a real estate, uh, how to be a real estate investor. I'm teaching how to write a book. I'm teaching. I have a speaker training that's coming out for everybody who wants to be a motivational speaker, who wants to craft their message, who wants to get to the next level. I want you to be in business because I am not like the rest of the world. I want there to be 
as many rich people as possible. I want there to be as many wealthy people as possible. I want there to be as many financially free people as possible. And that doesn't mean you have $25 billion. You could have 200000 and have no debt and be able to pay your bills and have passive income and be at peace. I want you to be at peace. I want you to be at peace. But you have to understand and you have to get out of the rat race. In order for there to be rich people, there have to be poor people. Think about it. Which one are you going to be? Are you going to start to unwind uh, this uh, confusing mess that we've all gotten into? Are you going to take it one step at a time? Or are you going to sit there and feel sorry for yourself? I don't want you to feel sorry for yourself. I know that the things are tight. I know that this is a struggle. I know that times do not look like they're great. I know that it's a bleak season, or it looks like it's a bleak season. But the truth is, if you can look up, you can get up, as my friend Les Brown says. As my friend Russell Simmons says, you can't fail until you quit. Now is not the time to quit. Now is the time to get a strategy. Now is the time to pick yourself up, to get an education, and to take yourself, your family, and your community to the next level. Earn income, losing. Capital gains and investment portfolio income, you're starting to win. Passive income through businesses and other ways that you can bring in money without working. That's the whole idea. You want to be able to bring in money without picking up anything, <laughs> okay? That's what you want to do. And you can do it. In order for there to be rich people, there have to be poor people. But what I'm saying to you is that does not have to be your fate. Let's do it. Brothers and sisters, we've stepped way out of the box. I want to thank you for everybody that gave me some extra time. Thank you for bearing with me on the technical difficulties. I want you to subscribe to her page. I got a special invitation in mind with, with your name on it today. Um, I want to give you her website. Let me see if I can find that very quickly. If I can find that website. It's by her name. You can go to YouTube. Lynn, L-Y-N-N, -N, and Richardson, and I may have that website name. I'll put it in the comments if I don't find it very quickly. I'm scanning through, and I don't see it handy. So let me look at one other area. I think I know where I put it, and I'm going to ask you to subscribe because I believe it's the type of content that can change so many lives. And let me tell you, this may sound strange to you, but you're hearing it from me. I don't know any other way to be but real. I'm concerned for your spirit primarily because you can have all the money in the world. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So the primary concern as a, as a pastor for me to you would be to line up with your God. That's, that's your spirit. But that's not the whole you. And I believe that God is concerned about the whole of you. And if you're in ministry, you should be concerned about the whole of a person as well. In fact, anybody who's not concerned about the whole of you, they really shouldn't even be speaking into your life. The reality is God's word says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a hope and a future, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. That's, that's what he told Jeremiah is, is true for you. He wants to give you a hope and a future. He wants to prosper you. But some of us, we've been on a path, let's just be clear, it's not been that prosperous. And we need to make some changes. And the woman of God, Dr. Lynn Richardson, shared an amazing fashion while that time is now. So you can go to her website at lynnrichardson.com. I have not met her. I do not represent her in that fashion. Uh, Whatever you do would be because the Lord leads you, but I wanted to present it to you because I want to connect you with the type of people that can change your life. That, that's my whole desire. I want to see you prosper in your spirit. I would that you be in good health and that your soul, I want you to prosper in every way. How can, how can anybody say they love you and they only concern about one part of you? I want to see you prosper. I want to see you flourish. I want to see your household. I want to see those connected to you. I want to see you thriving, not just surviving. I want to see you become the head and not the tail. I want to see you become the, 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 the lender and not the borrower. Listen, I might need to borrow a little something, right? No, I ain't. Really, I'm not. But the thing of it is, I want to see you be able to do that. And to do that, we got to make some shifts. So I want to thank God for all of the extra time that you gave me. 
Thank you, Dita. Yes, Lynn Richardson on YouTube. Please go to that. Uh, my dad says, from what I hear, I know she's not lying. Please continue. Amen to that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring an amazing young person. And she's an entrepreneur at heart because she's going to own studios. And she's going to own all kind of record companies and all that type of stuff. I see it. I feel it. I, I already know. I already know. And I want her to use her talent, one of the many, to worship the Lord in song as we extend an invitation in the house. Now, let me just say this. This invitation is, is, is unique. Obviously, if there's anybody, let me put it on the screen. If there's anybody, the primary is always, do you know the Lord? And if you don't, you should. Because again, what does a prophet, a man, if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? We want to see your soul saved. At the Joshua House of Worship, that's our primary concern. It's not all of our concern, but it's our primary concern that your soul is saved. If you've never given your life to the Lord, maybe you've been to church, maybe you pastored, <laughs> whatever. Have you given your life to the Lord? Do you know Jesus and the pardon of your sins? Is he going to say to you, come on up a little bit higher? You've been faithful of a few things. I'm going to make you a rule over more. Or is he going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Do you know the Lord Jesus? If not, we invite you wherever you are watching this broadcast, live or replay, to put salvation. Type it in the comments and let us know to stand and touch and agree with you. We can't save you, but he sure enough can. And we want to see that happen. We're concerned about your salvation. But secondly, there are some, uh, you're already saved, but you need a church home. You need a place where there are like-minded believers that are not playing games. You know, we don't have time for games. And we don't have time for church as usual or life as usual or business as usual. Nothing is usual. And we serve a God who is able to take all of what's going on now. It did not catch up or sneak up on him by surprise. He saw this coming. But he wants to plant you in a body of believers where you can do two things. One, receive ministry. And two, give ministry because you got something to give back to the body of Christ. So you're not a real member if you're not giving back. I'm going to say that again. You're not a real member anywhere. Well, if it's at the gym, you're not a real member anywhere if you're not giving back. And God wants to plant you in the body where you should be rooted and grounded. And if he sends you, don't you dare move unless he and he alone tells you to do so. Because anything other, other than that is sin. So we want to pray that you get your heart ready to receive him. And perhaps he's spoken to your life to be a member at the Joshua House of Worship. Maybe you don't even live in San Antonio. Praise the Lord, Laura. We love you, but God loves you more, woman of God. And I know with everything in me, your best days are in front of you about what I believe God is about to do in your life. I'm partnering with you in prayer. We want Minister Ethel to par partner with you in prayer as well as you've given your life to the Lord. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open up, I'll come in. I'll make myself one with him. I'll abide with him. God wants us to be one with him. No, no separation, no walls, no, no, none of that. He wants us to be one with him. And Laura, he's doing that for you right now. Receive the mercy of God, the grace of God, and the favor of God on your life. Even now, dear, dear woman of God. Someone needs to be a member at the Joshua House of Worship. God has spoken. See, here's what I've learned. Here's what I've discovered. I've, I've had uh, three pastors in all of my life. Uh, no, excuse me, four pastors in all of my life. And, and I know that in each occasion, God planted me where I needed to be to receive what I needed to receive so I can get to where God would have me to go. And I ain't there yet, trust me. But the thing of it is, if it wasn't for God giving me shepherds to guide me, I don't know where I would be. And I'm so imperfect. I am so flawed. But if God is speaking to you, you need a pastor in your life. And I'm going to say it again. You need a place where you can receive ministry and a place where you can give your ministry. You got brothers and sisters in this ministry now that are spreading across the United States, and I believe it's going to go international. And if he's speaking to you to be a member of this house, the place where the love of God abounds unconditionally, where worship comes to life, a small church that God has put in this time to make a big impact. 
especially we want you to put membership in the comments, put membership in the comments. And then last but certainly not least, some of you need to rededicate your life to the Lord. You've walked away from him. You started doing your own thing. Maybe you had good intentions, but you got distracted. You, you got off the boat and you took a detour. Well, come back home, son. Come back home, daughter. Give God what belongs to him and that's your very life. And then you might need us to pray with you and to pray for you. If that's you today, we invite you to type prayer or membership or rededication or salvation in the comments. And as the woman of God, this young, beautiful princess is singing her heart out to God, you go ahead and continue to type. I want you to open up your mouth and let God use you, Mariah. Okay, I'm going to be singing He Wants It All. There's a voice that cries out in the silence, searching for a heart that will love him, longing for a child that will give him their all, give it all. He wants it all. And there's a God that walks over the earth, searching for a heart that is desperate, longing for a child that will give them their all, give it all. He wants it all. And he says, love me, love me with your whole heart. He wants it all today. Serve me. Serve me with your life now. He wants it all today. Bow down. Let go of your idols. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all. And there's a God that walks over the earth. Searching for a heart that is desperate. Longing for a child that will give him their all, give it all. He wants it all. And he says, love me, love me with your whole heart. He wants it all today. Serve me, serve me with your life now. He wants it all today. Bow down. Let go of your idols. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. So give it all. More of you. More of you. He wants it all today. Oh, more of you. More of you. He wants it all today. Oh, more of you, more of you. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. So give it all. There's a voice that cries out in the silence, searching for a heart that will love him, longing for a child that will give him their all. Give it all. I, I, I remember this time, baby. <laughs> I am so proud of you. Mariah, how old are you, baby? 13. Ain't that something? I'll be 14 in November, though. Is that right? Well, praise the Lord. When's your birthday? November 13th. All right. We're going to have to send you some for your birthday. The Lord the Lord just used you all kind of way today. I know your grandma is so proud. I bet her and Papa John over there shouting and, and your mom. I know. Listen, let me ask you a question. Where, where do you get all that gift from? Did it come from, from your mom? I'm wondering why. To be honest, the only thing I know in my family who sings is my grandma, so. Okay. Oh, that's who you got it from. You got it from your grandma. <laughs> you think we can get you and your mama on next time together? No. You said that quickly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Well, you give a big hug for me anyway, amen? You got so many comments coming in. Let me just show you a few of them. You got Minister Cal. She says, he wants it all. Sing Mariah. Minister Ethel says, beautiful. He wants it all. Praise him. Dee Dee says, beautiful. Minister Sandy says, he wants it all. Amen. God wants it all today. Beautiful. My dad says one of my favorite songs that lead me in the worship. Amen. He got that from me. He, he said, because he knew that was my favorite song. That's why. So thank you, baby girl. I'm going to put you back in the lobby. Don't go too far. I'm going to bring Minister Carol in and she's going to lead us in stewardship and then our benediction. And on the
grand finale. I'm gonna have everybody back on the camera in a moment. Uh, let me see, Minister Carroll, you did. Oh, look like somebody went and got some dinner. Somebody went and got some. <laughs> what you say? Some grapes. Some grapes. That's what that is. Okay. All right. All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I'm, yeah, save some of those for me. Those look juicy. They look scrumptious. Uh huh. I'm gonna get out your way. I want you to lead us in the stewardship, and if you will, also uh, right before you do the benediction, I'm gonna bring everybody back on the panel, and everybody will get a chance to wave uh, the benediction to everybody. I want to thank everybody. This broadcast was extended in this time by your grace, your patience. I pray that something was said and shared in a way. There's so much more to be done, work to be done. In fact, on the 27th of Sep uh, September, I believe that's a Sunday at 4.30, I'm going to do a special workshop with some key people. You really don't want to uh, uh, miss it. It's going to be free. I am not looking for your money. Let me just tell you that right quick. It's going to be free. It's a free gift. It's my assignment. I'm an ambassador in that area. I'm not ashamed to say it. And I'm going to use my gift to do what it is that God has told me to do, and that's to be a blessing to people. If you're in the uh, place where you can attend and desire to attend that workshop, it's going to be for those who want to start a new business, who have started a business, but the marketing side of it all, you want to get some, uh, at least some beginning level coaching and assistance with tools and things of that sort, go ahead and put um hashtag give me that information hashtag give me that information you put hashtag give me that information i'm going to shoot you an inbox later on in the next 24 hours and you'll get all that information and i'll include you in it. it's going to be some special persons and we're going to be designed to help you it's not going to cost you a dime and i believe it's going to be very much well worth it in fact i know it i wish somebody would have did this for me years ago it wasn't done so let's just go ahead and get me out the way. I'm going to have Minister Carroll to lead us in the stewardship, and we'll bring everybody else on. Hello, everybody, and oh, what a great message today. I don't know about you, but I was encouraged, I was inspired, and I was informed. Amen. So many things that I did know that I need to know, but knowledge is nothing unless you apply it. Amen, somebody? And now is a time that we have to have the knowledge to know that it's time to give back to God that which he has so freely given unto us. Oh, no, we can never repay him, but we can make a sacrificial gift. We'd like to say thank you for those first time fighters who made a decision to give back unto the Lord. For those that just made a decision that has not been given. Thank you for our partners. We say thank you for those that don't have to. There's no obligation that you choose to give. We said thank you to each and every one of you. And you too can give. You can choose to give today if you have not already. How do you do that, Minister Carol? PayPal.me forward slash Joshua House of Worship. Again, that's PayPal.me forward slash Joshua House of Worship. There it is on the screen. Okay, I don't have PayPal, but I'd still like to give. You know, some people, they just like to mail in. You can mail it in, whether it be check, money order, however you want to do that. But you can mail it into post office box 755 Converse, Texas, 78109. And we'll pick that up and we'll, it will be received in the same manner if you'd like to do that. But however you choose to give, just give. God loves a cheerful giver. Will a man rob God? That's what the book of Malachi says. You think you don't rob God? Yes, sometimes we do. When we withhold that which he has asked us to give. He asks us to give. As a matter of fact, he commands us to give. So what decision will you make today? Amen, somebody. Will you pray with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to give back to you that which you have so freely given unto us. Lord God, we could never repay you for your sacrificial gift that you give to us so freely. But Lord God, bless our hearts, first of all, Lord God, that you would stamp it in our hearts to give back. Lord God, let us have a mind to give. 
then bless every soul that give, Lord God. Bless those that desire to give and even bless those that just don't have it, Lord God. Lord, then we'll be careful. We'll be careful. First of all, we'll use it for your glory. Then we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the honor for it all belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. All right, Minister Carol, I'm going to bring everybody back in place just so I could take a picture of all these beautiful persons. And I have uh, just about everybody coming in. I want to get Coach Todd back in as well. I think he might be off camera. I think I have everybody. I want you to lead us in the benediction. And uh, thank you guys for being so extra patient today and allowing us to get the information out. If you're watching this, help us to share. And yes, uh, two hours and 45 minutes, I believe every bit of it is going to be worth it. If it changes someone's life, changes their trajectory of themselves and their family. No more church as usual, life as usual, or business as usual. Minister Carol, can you give us our benediction? Amen. The pastor that we like to leave with you every Sunday that we meet with you sometimes fear will come. And so we'd like to remind you that the book of Dr. 189 God gives us the way that we can avoid that. And that book says, that passage says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be thou dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you may go. When you face fear throughout the week, make that personal where it says, I put your name there and speak to yourself. Will you pray with me, Father God, in the name of Jesus? Thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to gain more wisdom, to more knowledge, Lord God, and a better understanding, first of all, of how to serve you, then how to walk in your will and your way, for you've prepared us a way out of poverty, Lord God. Let us choose life instead. Lord, give us a mind to do your will. Give us a heart to do your will. Lord God, then give us attentive feet that will move according to what you said. Every soul that blessed us here today, Lord God, we say thank you for every soul that graced us to came to hear a word. Thank you, Lord God, for those that couldn't make it. Lord, a special blessing on this whole entire world, Lord God, for we're living in evil times, Lord God, but you are the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord God. We just Thank you for, Lord God, you've already walked out our path and our destination is we win. We choose to win. We will win. As a matter of fact, we have won and we glorify you in it all. We're always careful, Lord God, no matter what we do, we'll glorify you. We'll honor you and we'll praise you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Everybody, thank y'all so much. I'm just going to unmute the mic so everybody can say farewell and goodbye. And we are out. Love you guys. Thank you so very much. Thank you. God bless. Right. Praise God, family. Pastor Mel here. Listen, whether you got connected with our marriage enrichment, young adult ministry of serving in the children's shelter, even the nursing home. Whether you met us in person or online, we are a small church making a big impact. But we got a message for you. Come grow with us.